everyone. Everyone, I request everyone to please settle down so that we can begin with the next round of presentations. Can we have the attentions, please? Okay, so we begin with our next session on knowledge products and incentive mechanisms. And I would request our speakers, Mr. John Thomas, Mr. Swarna Bandhupadhyay, sir, Mr. Asim Sharma, Mr. Rahul Singh and Ms. Sumati Sood to please come on stage. With us from Aleph Eco, Mr. John Thomas, speaking about the CETPs for industrial wastewater management and the successful approaches in selecting operators for CETPs in Uttarakhand and Bihar. Mr. John. Good afternoon. Before we get into it, I'd just like to give you a bit of background about it. So, uh, this primarily for the CTPs, we are supposed to, we were helping two states, Bihar and Uttarakhand, with a bit of process management part of it. So, the background of the story is basically, we started off in December 2020, that just after the first phase of the COVID, I mean, the, the COVID lockdown, uh, it opened up and then there was a meeting on the eve of the Christmas Eve of 2020, when there was a review meeting of GISF, then we had the delegation from Bihar sitting along with Raghu Babu, telling that we are in a crisis, we need support. And that's the case when the principal secretary environment was here. They came, I think they had an NGT appointment or something, so they were here. They already had pressures. They applied, they tried five times to finalize on a CETP, but they're not able to go along with the bid process. So what they told one of the John helped me out immediately. Some kind of kind say somewhere you get me a draft tender document. Usme we'll just find replace with Bihar and put it and said try to float it. So that was the approach, and that could have been the reason also many times they tried it and they have failed it. So we tell him sir you will not get into this. Well, and mere upas itna pressure hai. Otherwise, my chief secretary has come before the NGT. The so pressure was of that sort. So this is the background of the story. So. They already tried five times, so I mean you need to look into why you are failing, first of all, before you go ahead further on those things. So that was the case. And for your information, they never had something called a CETP in Bihar. So first of all, they don't know what a CETP is. That was again a problem because unless you don't know what you are trying to achieve, how will you go ahead and achieve? So this was it. It's like, you know, you're trying to, the blind people going and finding an elephant. So everybody had different concepts of CETP. So that is what happened at that point of time. And then. That's when we tried to help them out and try to get into the process of it. So we had two cases, I'm trying to do it because in a very short time, we started with Bihar and then we extended it to uh, Uttarakhand. Bihar was a case which was something where they didn't have any idea about a CTP and they wanted to go ahead with it under the due pressure from the NGT. So that is going on. And, okay, okay. and uh, second thing was on Uttarakhand. So, Bihar was a case of brownfield projects. They had multiple industrial parks put up. None of them had their own uh, ETPs or CETPs per se. So that is how the situation was there. And there we had to go for a, because initially they had for five CETPs which have been required for. And then finally we did it for, what we did for was for, for an 8 MLD CETP which we have been putting up for 
in a place called Hajipur and with a treated water storage facility. And, and then the conveyance system was being taken from a separate contract. Then one of the key aspects we put in is we suggested for going for a modular concept of uh, two into three MLD streams to improve the, uh, the reliability and the flexibility part of it. So even if one stream, if, you, know, you don't have to close down the whole CTP because if the CTP closed down, that means whole of your industry park is going to close down. So how do you bring in that flexibility and uh, reliability into the systems? That was one of the reasons why which we went for two streams. And also if you want, you can go for a modular enhancement subsequently. So that was also brought in. Uh, and then the minimum guarantee, obviously, in an in, uh, uh, agency comes in to run it, they also need to be some, given some guarantee to come in. So the minimum guarantee of two MLD was also put in. Then the procurement time, what Bihar wanted was basically they were telling, okay, we don't want to go for an EPC model or anything, we'll go for an EPC model. So that was a, that's engineer, the typical engineering procurement and construction model was followed for it. So that was what, and we put in an additional clause of 10 years operation maintenance so that nobody builds and runs away. So there is a, you know, some sort of an attachment of the contractor to be responsible for it to get it executed. <coughs> so that is for the Bihar. Now when it comes to Uttarakhand, they already had three CTPs running in the state of Uttarakhand. So they are a bit more in the maturity stage, they are a bit more higher level at that point of time. But because again, Uttarakhand is in Ganga River Basin, they have pressures from the NGT and other places because again, whether we can go for a zero liquid discharge, and as an industrial development authority, you need to attract industries, not scare them and make them run away. So how do we really come to a solution? So those things were also looked into. And something innovative again here in Uttarakhand is, it has gone for an integrated industrial water project. That is, you have a CETP, which uh, the pollution control board has agreed for, coming in for 50% recycling, 50%, not less than 50% can be discharged. So that recycling component was brought in. And then again, they got from the Central Groundwater Authority for uh, withdrawal. And again, they put in one condition, only the SIPCOOL is permitted to withdraw, not any including industries. So then we have a centralized water, water treatment provision also. And then also for blending and then recycling that. So you have drinking water, industrial rain water, and the treated wastewater. So complete management that comes in for under a PPP mode. So it's a 30 years concession period which has been brought into it. So, and again, that's also on a phase manner. You start with two, you don't have big investments. Once you reach 80% of your capacity, go in for the next phase and like that. So the investor also don't feel the pinch of it and then he has a continuous flow of income coming in. So that was the concept brought in and again for a design build finance operate mode. Um, next. So then if you see, basically, we also had a tripartite agreement made with a technology provider. So that, there's again another challenge. You get the different technologies coming in. Whether you will it work? Because many of the international technology <coughs> providers, when they get it, the challenge for us is they have to own it. They have to take responsibility for it. And sometimes even with the, with the contractor who try to, you know, cut corners is still that they will show to us in the bid some XYZ contractor, I mean, technology provider, and then they try to you know cut corners and then try to design it with somebody else. So we have a tripartite agreement between the Viada, the con uh, the technology provider, and the contractor, so that they cannot change in between. And the technology provider is also responsible to vet all the designs and also handhold in the training post construction. So they are uh, they are also tied up in the process. Then on the financial bit evaluation conditions, it was capex plus uh, net present value of the opex for ten years was put into the concept, and so so that's how. And then we put in many other concepts also. Then again, Uttarakhand, uh, again it was an MBBR based technology put in. Same things are there. Uh, only difference is with the zero viability grant funding, they don't want to give any viability gap funding. So that component was put into it, and then accordingly the costing was worked on that. So the, we have helped them with the evaluation criteria also. Bihar, they've gone ahead, done the bidding, we helped them with the evaluation. And it was major thing as we had the, all stakeholders involved. One major thing which we would like to share with you, all of you is, one process which we effectively did in Bihar and which, is, which we are working other places also is, 
to before the we we call something like okay this is to get you a location about where it is like the four which you started with uh, okay this basically going to talk about the stakeholder consultations many times the pollution control board was not in sync with the, what viada was doing so base the bspcb was closely in a brought into the picture in deciding each part of it and they are also part of the evaluation committee when they select the contractor and the whole process was with a stakeholder consultation and another major part is we also called something as like a prospective bidder conference because it's very difficult to change things after you in a pre bid conference so before even you float your tender it's better to call all the stakeholders consult with them and understand your you run through your concept and then get the feedbacks before you formalize your tender details itself so that's a process we have got into it uh this because of this paucity of time i don't want to go to too much of it we'll give you anyway all the presentation slides and uh, i can uh, the key aspects we have put in here uh what are the different aspects of it uh i will just add one more point of it that's basically the 12th point major problem is oindem with most of the cet because you make the capex you put up the plant but running the plant is a problem so one thing we are insisted is the contractor has to deploy train trained sc skill council of in jobs trained people so as a skill person should be put in there that you cannot put anybody on the way so unko agar if they don't have within two years they have to get them trained so that was a condition we have put in and the continuous continued training of the personnel was put in as a condition pre condition so that was also there and uh, then all the security access osens all those put in put into the picture in uttar uh, we also put in for the uh, tariff apportion apportionment because you need to collect money from people in a very transparent manner so how do we put in what is the penalties to be put in what is the charges to be put in those things are also put in for the online monitoring systems and all those things were there um okay then uh, one thing more is we always in the contracts we generally go by the guarantee guarantees and penalties so we went one step ahead beyond the guarantees and penalties we need to also bring in incentives how do we incentivize the contractor so this was one of the concept to for if they do complete the project before time they were given some incentives for that that's already then energy saving because generally you know they don't bother about energy the commitment is great so if they are making the beyond the commitment energy savings so then they will also benefit from it that's only way you can keep them incentivized to go beyond and bring in energy savings and any recovery of the say sludge or anything if they make it the valuable products we were suggesting about a 50 50 benefit sharing so yada also get the benefit and the contractor if it does go beyond and take it on its own initiative and do something which brings in revenue streams they also benefit from it so that's what i want to share in short uh, this for the future we have put in the different institutional components which we told the career had to build into the system and to make it strengthen because uh, building a ctp cc but running it has a lot of challenges so how the institutional mechanisms and all to be put in place so we made a whole thing about it the different guidelines are there i mean a lot of them are already available in the country many of them we need to bring in together in short i have many more slides to do but then of it here and if you have any questions i am here to answer them thank you i have one question yes ma'am in bihar you have done in hajipur only haji yeah i'll tell you again we they started with five cdps which has gone to that and there was heavy pressure from the ngt also to do all the five cdps a uh, five industrial estates when we asked them to get the details you are asking to put cdps fine so what is the basis of it so many we found that we again discussed with the uh, pollution control board and got from pollution control board some place you are getting only 140 kilo liters per day if that is the case it is not worth to put a cdp you will not even pay for the cost of conveying the effluent to your system So in that case, is why you need a CTP? You put it as CTP if you have water there. If you don't have waste water, why you put CTP? So you rather tell that who is polluting, put a ETP for themselves. So CTP comes into picture, provide there's a viability for it. So those things we try to help them. Same thing we did in Uttarakhand. If they found that it's a plastic park or an aromatic oil park, there's no waste water expected from that. It's more of sewage. If it is sewage, why you want a CTP for that? So don't blindly go for a CTP just because. You are in industrial park. Because the leather units are in the different area. Hajipur, you get some of the paper industry. Uh, Hajipur predominantly is a food sector. Uh, food you have Britannia and uh, Pepsi and all yeah. those things. So that's in Hajipur that is the case. 
leather of his Musafarpur has it, but most of them are closed as of now. Yeah, but it is closed. Most of them are closed. No uh, leather tannery were operating when we visited there. But then. See, if we were a question from the NGT to the Musafarpur area, basically. Um, not only there, it was, they had pressure for all the five because that was what projected to them. Now that projection was had to be on some basis, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's why we challenged that. What, what basis? Okay, you want a CTP, accept that. But why do you need it? Tell me why you need it. What is the order from there? They didn't have any figures for that. And if you don't have the basic requirement, how will you ask somebody to build something for you? So that was the problem which why they failed in the commerce of the bits also. So that's what we tried to streamline, make them understand and make the things very transparent and clear so it becomes a win-win situation otherwise you're putting public funds to going to waste so how do we really put that so that was the principle issue what was the volume existing wastewater volume what wastewater volume here at um, hajipur we had around two mnd as per the reports but they would have got uh, consent for operation it's really funny in bihar you take a consent to operate doesn't specify where to discharge, what what call it, it only mentions you should follow as per the uh, MOEF guidelines or the CPCT guidelines. Nowhere it is mentioned what should be the parameter to be followed, where to discharge, what quantity is discharged. Very few CTOs have this specified. So this is what again we are hand holding the PSPCB for this. When you write a consent, it should be something which is enforceable. Otherwise, how will you enforce a CTO unless these things are specified? So, you know, we had in the morning, you know, you're telling about being enforcing. So, if you want something to be enforced, you have to specify clearly. So, that is what it was. But they are all uh, chemical industries or what? Yes, sir. No, no, Hajipur is food sector, predominantly. Food. Predominantly food sector, then you have some uh, hatcheries also. Mm -hmm. So, if you see Bihar, predominantly you don't have much chemicals. Predominantly it's food sector. You green and all the other part of it. Some places you have like Muzaffarpur, we have four or five tanneries, but it were all closed under the CPCB thing. So they were trying to revive it, but then again it has to be taken up. And there are already many fly by night consultants also who misguide the people also. So they have put in something called a zero liquid discharge there. It's very funny system to see if you go there, you'll find it. So because they have been guided by people, I don't just blame the industries. There are they are being misguided and people don't guide properly. So, so there is a issue which is there which have to be solved accordingly. So even we have found when we did one of the surveys, one of the government, I mean, state industrial areas, 30% of the industries are in the PCP records. The other 70% who are operating are in industrial development authority records but not in PCP. So they don't exist as for the PCP. So that could be also one reason why there is a huge gap in the effluent generation records. So and that's again a revenue loss for the government because unless it's not registered, you don't get your consent fees. Thank you, John, for the presentation. And I suggest we take the questions at the end of the session so that we get more time for discussions. And I would like to now invite uh, director from Prayukti International, Mr. Swanabha Bandhupadhyay, to present the document, the guidance document prepared on the estimation of pollution loads and setting up of CTP. Hi, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for having me here. Uh, I would thank uh, Mr. John personally for giving the perfect platform to continue my presentation because this is exactly the problems we are dealing with and that's what we worked on. So, can I have my... Yeah. So, uh, the topic of the work that we did uh, was... Oh. Hello. Yeah, so the topic of the work that we did, which was tendered to us uh, by ZZ, was uh, initially to take common industrial area uh, and do the load assessment and then decide if a CTP is required or not and what would be the design and specification if a CTP is required. But eventually there were some issues, so Khamer was not taken as a 
project itself. So we moved on to develop the entire guidance document, which in any case was part of the original contract. So we took whatever required as a case. And we also looked into the other industrial areas across India with our own database and our work in other places. So, Uh, so the preface of it is already known to everyone, but just uh, NGT was uh, uh, given a directive to all the state pollution control boards that you need to clean up the polluted stretches of the rivers in your respective states. And with that uh, particular uh, background, with this particular work was awarded to us from ZIZ. So the objective of this work was to do a load assessment, how to carry out a load assessment. Uh, uh, from an industrial estate and based on that to decide whether a CTP is required or not and if it is required what should be the uh, design specification and uh, the basic design of it. So uh, we did the approach uh, methodology in, in three steps. First we uh, identified what is required to do a profiling of an industrial area because until you know the profile of an industrial area it will be very difficult to characterize the wastewater that is coming out of that particular industry or industrial area. So for that purpose, we did a number of stakeholder consultations uh, with Kamar also as well as other places where we uh, do work in our other um, projects. So we took that feedback and then uh, we also looked into the um, other questionnaire surveys uh, to take the primary data and then put all these information in the various GIS layer to uh, do a GIS profiling of that industrial area. Uh, once the uh, profiling of that area is done, then we went to the load calculation method. So we uh, typically used a mass balance approach uh, and uh, based on that, we identified what are the criteria pollutants uh, and how it should be managed. And then we came to the rationale for the CTP that whether this particular um, wastewater characterization or the volume really require a CTP. And if it is done, uh, what should be the design and specification? So, in that, uh, these are the different part of that uh, approach. Uh, so, you can see that uh, we did a questionnaire survey. So, we developed questionnaire for the industries. We developed questionnaire for the regulators. We also did questionnaire for the common people to understand their buying. Uh, so uh, until unless the local people is also involved and you get the buying, put a CTP in a particular area will be very difficult. And we have found many uh, um, instances where NIMBY is one of the issue, not in my backyard. So we wanted to take care of that. And then once uh, we come to that uh, understanding, yes, um, enough characterization of the wastewater is already there and we know what is coming out. We went for the uh, estimation uh, method. So for that we decided what should be the sampling, how it should be the frequency, when it should be done, uh, what are the parameters, uh, what will be the frequency and based on all these how the load calculation should be conducted. Uh, once the first two steps are done then we come to the uh, development of the CTP rationale. So we developed an index that based on which we can decide where uh, CTP is required, if it is required, where it should be, and then what should be the design and operational aspect. We also looked into its business model as well as management model. So the result of that um, uh, work, ideas about the key steps and uh, well, doing the industrial profiling, uh, while rendering the survey data on the GIS, and also how um, the different layers and the element should be put into the GIS. What should be the ideal parameters? Uh, because there are too many data. If you put all of them in the GIS, it will be clogged, uh, totally uh, congested, and nobody will be able to deduce any particular information out of it. So we need to optimize on the data set and the layers and so that you can come to a decision making process. 
uh, we also looked into the load cal calculations and uh, this pollution load, uh, what are the challenges, what are the different issues that might come up and how to overcome those. So we also put those recommendations. Uh, also with the sampling uh, and um, analysis, what are the key uh, issues that we should be looking into and we should be aware of taking the precautions even at the field level what uh, parameters we should be conducting and what kind of precautions should be with the field kits and all. And then we came to the schematic of the CETPs. So we uh, discussed on the different type of schematics and um, also did a comparative analysis of the different treatment methodologies. Uh, suppose uh, there is a biological treatment methodology. So there are multiple methodologies. So which one to take under what circumstances? What uh, kind of uh, wastewater characteristics should be ideal for a particular kind of uh, treatment technology? So based on all these, we basically developed uh, this guidebook, as you can see. And based on our work, what we understand or uh, what we feel, the way forward, there are a lot of issues that need to be addressed at the policy level, also at the operational level. Like influent discharge standard, today, For effective industrial wastewater management, under SEEP, there is a multi-pronged multi -pronged approach. Apart from knowledge products, we also have our focus on incentive mechanisms. And for that, now I would like to invite and state Mr. Asim Sharma from FIKI to speak about the awards that have been put in place to foster best practices from the industries. And before that, I would just like to bring to your notice that uh, we are also live uh, streaming this conference live for our participants who have joined live, who have been also watching this uh, presentations and learning when taking their takeaways from this. Thank you very much. So at the outside, I would like to thank GAZ providing a key for to this important conference and providing an opportunity to present on the incentive mechanisms for the industry for their sustainable practices. Uh, our division, FIKI's Environment and Climate Change Division, has been partnering with GIZ for more than a decade now in similar initiatives. And we hope to continue and deepen our relationship in this. So uh, the background, SEIP2, uh, as everyone knows, uh, uh, was is being implemented by GAZ, focusing on improving sustainable practices across industries as well. And one of the approaches was to develop a incentive framework to incentivize industries. And in this regard, in partnership with FIKI, uh, we instituted the awards in water, sustainable industrial practices and excellence in industrial disaster management as a proportional instrument and incentive mechanism in the following segments. So basically water, sustainable industrial practice and excellence in industrial disaster management award. Water awards we had conducted on 23rd of November, so SIP awards last week itself, 14th Feb, and uh, the upcoming week we will be going ahead with the industrial disaster management awards. So uh, this is the award selection process uh, which we had followed for these projects. We had uh, a call for application process. A call for awards was put through print and online advertisements and nominations for the di different categories was received. Uh, standard template which we developed for getting the information from the industry was developed. A preliminary screening by FIKI uh, in accordance with the eligibility criteria was uh, done and uh, a screen plan, uh, panel also screened each nomination to check the data authenticity and information presented. And the screened uh, applications was then presented to the jury members for the, the two awards, water as well as the sustainable industrial practice awards. Uh, jury then had gone through uh, the review of the shortlisted applicants and finalized the winners in each category.
So uh, the FIKI awards uh, took place at the 8th edition of the India Industry Water Conclave on 23rd of November. And uh, there were four categories, uh, industrial water use efficiency, innovation in water technology, uh, community initiatives by industry, as well as urban wastewater management. And these are the winners of, across these categories. And uh, just before I go to sustainable industrial practice awards, so FIKI uh, water awards are aimed to uh, basically recognize efforts and leadership in water efficiency and conservation as well as develop a knowledge base on sustainable water management practices adopted by different stakeholders and disseminate best practices for encouraging their adoption. And uh, in fact, we uh, received, a, I think, a very enthusiastic response from the industry. Uh, I think cumulatively, we received more than 600 entries for these awards across all categories. So, uh, so that uh, uh, shows that industry is interested in adopting sustainable industrial practices. Um, uh, so uh, we organized the seventh international uh, sustainability conclave, uh, during which the first FIKI sustainable industrial practice awards were presented. And uh, the conclave has always sort of uh, endeavored to highlight uh, the direction that top corporates have taken in the sustainability. Uh, it always it had focused on important dimensions such as uh, importance of corporate sustainability in the context of SDGs, environmental concerns and threats, increasingly becoming a risk to business continuity, embedding sustainability in corporate goals and strategies as an imperative for companies to build their business resilience. And uh, uh, this, uh, these dimensions revolve around the, these key themes, sustainable lifestyles, uh, sustainable supply chains, hard to avoid sectors, uh, we uh, also had a session on sustainable finance and we also had a session on green startups uh, who are uh, innovating in this category. And we had two uh, award categories, platinum and gold awards uh, across all the three categories, large industry, medium and micro and small industry. So this was the met methodology being followed. Um, so we had asked the industries across all these aspects, uh, all the, both the impact areas they had uh, provided energy, water, material, product, logistics, waste, effluents. So the impact uh, across all these impact areas, they were evaluated and a weightage was provided to the screened applicants and accordingly they were ranked. So across this, uh, we had uh, two winners across each category, platinum and gold award. Uh, so, uh, so there was a lot of uh, uh, you could say difficulty in also sort of selecting the winners, uh, uh, but uh, a jury had finalized on these entities. And there was a special mention also, as I just mentioned that because it was difficult to sort of award all the, provide an award to all the industries. Uh, there was a special mention to these entities as well. These are the snapshots from the conclave. Uh, this was presented by uh, Ms. Jennifer Morgan, State Secretary and Special Envoy Climate Government of, of January, and uh, as well as Fiki, uh, Dr. Mokund Rajan, uh, Fiki Chair of Environment and <coughs> Change Committee, as well as uh, Ms. Nana Lal Kedwai, who is the past president of Fiki, and he, she also leads the Fiki Water Mission. Mm -hmm. So these are the bodies. Uh, uh, now, next we will be uh, presenting the uh, Excellence in Disaster uh, Risk Management Awards on Feb 28 to recognize and incentivize the efforts of industry for adoption of resilient practices for environment protection and safety of workers, mitigating risk and fostering industrial disaster resilience based on the following criteria which is mentioned below. And uh, so we will continue uh, to sort of incentivizing the industries uh, via these incentive frameworks or awards sector and uh, share best practices insights from the winner winner categories across all these categories. Uh, before I conclude, I am thankful to uh, the entire GZ team for their continued support to FIKI in con uh, conducting these initiatives successfully. We look forward to partnering with GZ uh, 
on these initiatives next year also, hopeful, and engage on similar pro programs in the sustainability and in, in the future. This is just a start on sustainability. Uh, we hope uh, uh, to gain momentum on uh, this uh, very important area. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Sharma. Taking the discussions forward on awards and incentives, I would now like to invite Ms. Sumati Sun, Director IGCC, to take stage and talk about the Sustainability Awards as a mechanism for industries to demonstrate their innovative solutions for industry wastewater management. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Sumati Sud from the Indo-German Chamber of Commerce. And last year, in the year 2022, we did the Sustain Awards together with GIZ. Next slide. So basically, the it was to strengthen initiatives and awards for breast performances in the industrial wastewater. The objective was to develop and implement sustainability awards to recognize the private sector contribution towards positive and impactful industrial wastewater management. Of course, the background is that the Indo-German Chamber in cooperation with GIZ organized these awards in the year 2022. What were the awards? We had five award categories. Uh, they were uh, uh, the best large Indian company, the best large foreign company, the best Indian SME, uh, the best foreign SME and industrial parks. So these were the five categories for the awards. What was the eligibility criteria? The eligibility criteria was uh, companies that or industrial parks that were based in Uttarakhand, West Bengal and Bihar. The size of the company was of course according to the, uh, law, the Indian law. That, that's how we define the size of the company and any Indian subsidiary company who, whose you know mother company was based outside of India was treated as a foreign company. The award process of course was uh, we called in for the applications thereafter the applications were screened and uh, after the uh, screening we had uh, on-site uh, assessment of these companies and of course in the end we had an independent jury which consisted of people from academia um, from public sector from private sector and association and development corporations who finally um, you know took out the winners uh, what were the how did we assess uh, these companies uh, we had five different uh, pointers to assess these companies. One was management quality, infrastructure quality, economic quality, social impact, as well as environmental impact, of course, with subcategories. Uh, the, the award was uh, announced in the summit by the Indo-German Deputy Director General, uh, Mr. Stefan Halusa. He is there in the picture in the center. Then. We had a lot of meetings in uh, various states. Um, sorry. I'm sorry. I think this is stuck. This is stuck. So this was some of the events that promotional events we uh, undertook in Uttarakhand, uh, in Haridwar, in Pantnagar. Uh, next slide. Uh, so, uh, some. This was the uh, the award ceremony in uh, in in Calcutta in on the second of December. The environment, the industry minister was the chief guest uh, at that event. Next slide. So these, of course, is a glimpse of the attendees there. It was very well attended. 
uh, the award winners for the large companies for second and third prize, uh, the SMEs for second and third prize. You can see the companies there and the industrial park went to Sidkul in Pantnagar. Next slide. Uh, this is the glimpse of all the award winners of the ceremony. Thank you very much, Ms. We heard this morning, earlier this morning, Mr. Vinod will talk about the induction uh, training and refresher training programs held for CPC. So to take that forward and to talk about the modules that were created and the idea behind this, I would like to invite Rahul Singh from SIA, that's Sustainability Innovations and Advisories, Private Limited, to elaborate on that. Thank you, Kritika, and good afternoon to everyone present over here. <clears throat> Before just starting about the induction course, which we developed for the CPCB and the Pollution Control Boards, I'll just tell you the idea behind it. We started with an idea to develop a knowledge product, but eventually ended up in developing both the knowledge product and the incentive mechanism, you can say, for the PCB officials. At very beginning, at the very initial stage, we were with a limited ambition. We started with a limited ambition, but the project itself has drawn organically on its own. So, and I'll tell you why. And let me tell you one thing very frankly that the feedbacks which we have received from the participants of these programs, I can tell you that this is one of the super hit programs for the PCP officials and might be one of the first program where we are not talking about any air pollution, water pollution or waste management issues. So during the conceptualization stage only, as Mr. Chandra Bhushan also discussed in his opening remarks, that we were very clear that we want something to be a formal training program which will not focus large on the te technical issue and which is not forced on the PCB official, which should be from their interest. And how we can generate something which is of interest for PCB officials, that was a big challenge. So from the conceptualization stage only, we... Sorry. We started with the development course the development of the tra induction training program was that we'll do the training need assessment, we'll develop the courses, then we'll develop the training modules, the handouts, and then we'll conduct the pilot, which will help us in understanding the logistical issues or the other whatever challenges from the in inception stage it is there, we can rectify it during the uh, pilot training. So something on the ground, something on the lines of induction training program, which is a mid-level career training program for civil services officers in the country. We started with that and this program has been designed to equip the PCB officials not on the technical aspect but on other professional core skills which will help them to do their tasks, perform their tasks much better. So we first had to understand what is the function of PCB officials. So if we, we started with developing the modules for PCB officials at different level. So we came up with a solution that largely the role would be of environmental compliance and then awareness, development, support, regulation, other things. So with that, we objective and methodology which we followed for the training need assessment. So it was first to map the existing competencies which is already there with the PCB officials and then the what are the desired competencies so for that we had a detailed process uh, I'll tell you if you can see over here the there was an individual question individual questionnaires FGD discussions analyzing the results and then a consultation with the expert committee to validate whether whatever we have got is right. so 70% of the scientists and all the grade A officials at CPCB were 
taken for this individual questionnaire and they shared their responses, what is their desire from the training course, what is their uh, expectation from the induction training course. Then we had FGD at all levels, with starting from scientists B, C, D, E, F, at every level, almost like 50% of the ACB responded to this, being part of this FGD discussions. And then we analyzed the results, and as in the morning, Mr. Bhushan said, we were uh, surprised to see the results. Means we divided, as per the NSQ of guidelines, we divided, means we got the feedback on 30 different modules on what the uh, what will be a suitable uh, module for a PCB official. And we got the, we were surprised to see that most of the PCB officials want course on core and professional skills rather than technical and professional knowledge. So, all the modules on which we got the feedback was on the level of awareness which they already have and the relevance to their job and then the training requirement. And when, when you see the level of awareness at each level, when we are talking about scientists B, C, D, E, you will see it's in the same ratio, whether it's uh, scientist B will have a certain amount of level of awareness, then it eventually grows with C, D, and E. Relevance to the top also very much similar in most of the uh, things you will find similar in from B to C to D to E. And same is with the training requirement. And eventually when you see all these aspects, whether it's dealing with legal, matter, judicial matter, time management, and other things. Everything was focusing on uh, core and professional skill rather than on technical knowledge and professional knowledge. So we had this in mind while conceptualizing the uh, modules which we had to develop. And the other thing also was that something which is suitable for all level, which is not for a specific level, which is suitable for all level of PCP official from B to E. So the modules which emerged, we categorized into three aspects. One is organizational setup and the context. The other is technical, some technical uh, solutions, and then core and, profession, uh, core and professional skills. So the outcome of the module, we have developed an LMS portal, the online portal where everything has been developed. So. The, one of the positive thing is that it is a personalized concept as it is based on the training need assessment. Content is available 24 into 7 on the LMS portal. Activities, when we, did, we were developing the module, we had this in mind that we'll not be lecturing the PCB officials. We'll be engaging them in all the sessions which we'll be delivering. So one third of most of the sessions, is when you see the modules, one third of all the modules is activity based. It's discussion, it's question and answer, and 30% only is lectures. So these are some of the modules which we developed. And if you can click on the, I'll just show you in detail one of the agenda. Yeah, so this is the LMS portal which we have developed and everything for the PCB official is available over here online. If we can, if we can show the modules, yeah. So all the course materials are uploaded on the portal and a brief about the session
the brief about the session, the PPT, the reading materials, and everything is aligned as per the five, uh, mo uh, five agenda sheets of the NSQF guidelines, which tells about process required, professional knowledge, professional skill, core skill, and uh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, responsibility. Yeah. So, so you can see this is the PPT. The next one is the just below that. Yeah, the module, some reference material, and these modules are all being developed as per the NSQ of guidelines. Since each module has an objective and which should be fulfilled after each course, and the course doesn't end with the. Uh, five-day training program which we do. It's actually after attending this course, all the PCB officials have to attend, give an assessment, which is from third party, which is from Skill Council of Green Jobs. They conduct the assessment, and after that, the participants get the certificate, means they are certified for this uh, training program, whichever they have attended. So i like to thank GIZ for understanding the need, whenever we tell about capacity building, it comes about like, okay, training programs, we need to have 20, 25 people, somebody who can come and give lectures, and that's it. But thank you for uh, thank you to GIZ and Ragusa for uh, understanding that the training program capacity building is not just giving lectures and uh, giving certificates away, but uh, it's a process which we followed from the very beginning. We spent six months in developing all the modules, understanding the needs, and then we developed this course. Thank you, thank you so much. So all of you, all of you now got to learn about the knowledge products and incentive promotional mechanisms that are in place under the CIP. So I'd like to, these incentive mechanisms and uh, knowledge products have been implemented in the states that SEIP has been working with. So I'd like to now open up this question to the other participating states here and I would like to ask about the feasibility or the replicability of these products. How would you want to take this forward? Citizen. Yeah, so um, I think all of these uh, all of these products are excellent, but uh, replicability in terms of states would differ widely across the states. Many of them, which are which may be applicable in the larger states, when you come to smaller states such as. Uh, Tripura, which I am uh, represent today, many of them would need to be either uh, modified significantly or would not be applicable at all. So, so it's not that one size fits all. It will have to, you know, modulate it according to the need, needs of the states. Very fair. Sao, sir, your comments, please. Uh, uh, actually, uh, I must uh, say many of the states, in fact, are uh, having some sort of uh, awards like. Uh, the states give award on the World Environment Day or some, uh, say for example, in Odisha, we give uh, Environmental Excellence Award and uh, uh, Environmental, uh, two, three awards under different sectors. Of course, the criteria, the focus area, the methodology, they all, uh, they are different. So the takeaway from this would be that if it is happening in other states, uh, the, the lessons from this can be taken up for further refinement of uh, uh, they are uh, award an incentive, uh, uh, I mean, methodologies and process. So that is uh, uh, one thing. And uh, I have one more uh, question on the uh, uh, training program uh, to Rahul. Is it like this uh, training manual is available, sort of uh, can be ready for a used at a ready reference, or if it can be upgraded to a ready reference document? so that it can be beneficial to a lot of more people. I mean, besides, if somebody can pick it up and just uh, refer it as and when it uh, requires. So that would be a great uh, Thank you. 
In fact, these all modules are available on our LMS portal, and all the participants from whoever have participated in this training program get access to this LMS portal. So, as I said, these are all means 24 into 7 uh, availability is available to the participants, and as well to all the participants who ever want to visit our LMS portal and have access to it. Uh, just to add on to that, uh, on this particular training modules, uh, there are going to be three. Uh, nine have been done already, nine sessions. There will be three more sessions for Odisha, Gujarat and Maharashtra exclusively for them. And we have also uh, had discussions with the CPCD. The CPCD is keen to take forward afterwards. So the, to your question, yes, uh, the tender document uh, is going to be launched by CPCD soon. And that will have all these modules all packaged uh, and handed over to CPCD. I must actually congratulate uh, the entire team because the kind of feedback that they have got from yeah. the selected officers, whoever has been there, uh, I mean, uh, many of them, in fact, they say that it's, uh, first of all, it's one of its kind. Yeah. So, yeah, actually, we used uh, uh, very different methods of training, uh, like, you know, the lecturing and all that. So, this was uh, very different. There was a lot of engagement. The trainers were very carefully selected. So what uh, Rahul's team is now doing is for each of the modules, they're keeping standard trainers, the material is standard now. Sometimes, you know, you have some trainers available, sometimes not. So that is also getting standardized. But more importantly, CPCD in principle said they would like to now outsource this training uh, for all to continue it. Uh, but um, this is not the only training, right? They have training as one of the main functions. I think SPCDC also have it. I think we all have to work on all the other modules. There are technical modules, there are uh, professional skill modules and core skill modules required more than what we have done yet. Yeah, request you all to please take this forward um, for application in other places. And awards, you are right. Uh, there are different forms of awards, but when we initially asked uh, if these awards can be won by the Pollution Control Board or by the Ministry of Environment, um, there is not readiness on that. You are more than ready to control and command, but you are not willing to promote and encourage or reward or award, right? I think you all agree with me. Uh, but we have seen, but in that case, I do agree there is some, some kind of a conflict of interest, some kind of conflict of interest. And you have agencies like FIKI, India German Chamber of Commerce, there are a lot of other organizations who are neutral and who can do that. So probably you need some collaborations, like USEP is also doing this kind of collaboration. You might need some collaborations, some partnerships that you can distance. Even the technology platform in the morning you saw, uh, you if you don't if you find conflict of interest, you can always make certain collaborations and partnerships. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think that was wanted to say. Yes, uh, Mr. Raghuram, you are also very correct in West Bengal. Uh, I think uh, uh, way back in uh, 2002, we started with this one environmental uh, cleaner production center along with the uh, Indian Chamber of Commerce and uh, National Productivity Council. And in initial two, three years, we were a partner of giving this environmental excellence award, not only with the West Bengal in the entire Eastern region, but as Dr. Shahu, you want us know that. And after that, we find that uh, Indian Chamber of Commerce, they themselves are well equipped. And as a regulatory authority, we withdraw uh, from that uh, activity. But still, for your kind information, that still uh, this Indian Chamber of Commerce independently, they are doing that thing. And it is appreciated uh, by all concerned. This has to be there. Yeah. Thank you for highlighting uh, yes. And. Uh, Regarding uh, this training module concept, I was a discussion even today morning that where uh, this pollute, because after long experience in the pollution control board, now the time has come that the uh, we in the pollution control board, that time is very important factor. When we are dealing with the industry, yes, industry when they are not complying with the standards from the pollution control board, state level, central pollution control board level, we can issue a lot of directions. We can finally we can close them down, disconnected electricity, water supplies. But at the same time, after our direction industry, when they accepted, when they 
comply with our directions and when they approach respective pollution control board sometimes unnecessarily while moving one point to other point other people we are taking time and one day one hour time it is my experience one day one hour time is very very important for that particular industry so i think the more training is needed particularly for the people in the pollution control board who work in the online platform so that everybody should know and we want to one click when industries are comply with all our direction we should not take much more time to give them clearance order so that they can continue with their operation that is time and money is very very important now that is my uh, i would like to highlight on this thank you Yeah, first of all, I take this opportunity to compliment all these four presenters who made excellent presentations, and also I would like to convey my very deep appreciation for the kind of the outcomes and the successful models and the clear-cut case studies in terms of case studies that they have brought out. The thing is, see, when we now let me say. two presentations on cetps one is a case study and another one is a guidance document the two more presentations on awards for best performance and the fourth one is on the training they are all interrelated interconnected mind it why i am saying so see today of course some people they were uh, reacting to that how these could be taken forward by other respect to states or state governments or state pollution control boards for that matter see yes it differs from state to state but what giz that in collaboration with the central pollution control board and other key partners they have been able to capture the requirements and also how best we could enhance the quality of the environment in terms of air quality or water quality whatever it may be but these are the success stories now see every time giz on its own will not be in a position to replicate across the country see once these case studies the successful models are made available now it is for the ministry of environment forest and climate change as also the central pollution control board and the state pollution control board to take them forward so then of course as a guidance giz is always there their, their presence is there across the country you can as well approach them but unless unless i think even if this today the land secretary in the concluding remarks if he comes i would like to put forward the same view the ministry should warn these documents these successful models and then disseminate and then put it across the country then only it will be meaningful exercise otherwise i know that how rabu babu is working it with his i mean very dedicated staff but at the same time but unless this is taken forward and replicated across the country it will not be possible to ensure the quality of the environment my humble request to today whomsoever is represented is representing from the state pollution control boards or from other government departments kindly warn this successful models as they are developed by you then only it will see the light of the day thank you very much <laughs> thank you very much sir so i'd like to invite one of my colleagues to present a token of appreciation to our presenters ask you to present it to to mr swarna baban dabal dia sir to john thomas So 
continuing forward, I would like, like to ask Mr. Raghu Babu now to come take the stage to present the next round of presentation. Thank you. Our next session on strengthening of organizational structures and processes, I would now like to ask our presenters to come up on stage. Ms. Deepthi Kapil from CPCB. Welcome on stage, ma'am. Dr. Tapas Kumar Gupta. Tapas, sir. Dr. Somnath Narayan and Mr. Raghu Baba. So, I'd like to ask Dr. Tapas Kumar Gupta to present the assessment of pollution of river, assessment of pollution loads of river Pudyadhari and the improvement, the rejuvenation of resources through efficient mapping. Sir, please. Good afternoon. Myself, Tapash Gupta, I am representing West Bengal Pollution Control Board along with me, my colleague, Dr. Rita Shah, she is also here. And we will be presenting the work, uh, what has been done with the help of GI Jet at the state of West Bengal. At the outset, I would like to convey our sincere thanks to GIJ team, particularly to Mr. Raghu Babu, Mr. Banerjee and other colleagues of the GIJ for extension of their help for <coughs> carrying out this work in the state of West Bengal. This is basically with the help of GIJ team we try to understand the how in a particular river things are getting polluted, what are the sources. Perhaps you are all aware sometimes in 2018 and 19 when Central Pollution Control Board based on the regular data, what is, what is the one of the most important job of state level pollution control board to carrying out different water quality data on monthly and quarterly basis and from our database all across the country central pollution control board has identified 351 river stretches and 17 river stretches in the state of West Bengal. and since 1985 when the Gonga action plan was launched by the then Honorable Prime Minister. We are all concerned about Ganga, River Ganga, River Ganga. Now it is a national river. But after the identification of the major river stretches in the state of West Bengal, we could see that there is one river which is passing most <coughs> western, uh, this uh, eastern part of our state. 
river Biddadori. <coughs> this, this river Biddadori, 20 kilometer stretch was identified as a polluted river stretch. And it was the priority number one, where the level of BOD from our data, from our survey, it was more than 30 milligram per liter. Next slide, please. <coughs> and uh, next slide. You see, from the slide, you can see that uh, this river Bittadhuri, <coughs> it is also very close to it is also very close to um, Bangladesh and there are three rivers, mainly Jamuna, Ichamoti and uh, our this Biddhaduri were present long back from the old data we could see. <laughs> and during that time there was a margin point but in 2018-19, when we came to know that river Biddhadori, the level of BOD it is more than 30 milligram per liter. And in 2019, as per the direction of the Central Pollution Control Board, not only on West Bengal, for all the states, that our responsibility was to prepare an action plan for combating the water pollution level in all the rivers. For Ganga, a lot of work was done in Ganga Akshar plan phase 1, phase 2, Namami Ganga 1, now Namami Ganga 2 in is in progress. But nothing has happened in Vidyadhiru bit surprise. And initially uh, there were some action plan taken that we could understand that we will have to have a common Swiss treatment plant of having 165 MLD capacity at the end of the river Dadari. Then uh, when I came to Delhi and when GIJ were ready to extend their support to West Bengal, that uh, then Mr. Raghubabu and their team, they visited our state. They meet our Diden Environment Principal Secretary Environment, the Chairman Pollution Control Board. And from the Pollution Control Board side, we have approached them I am, details are there in the presentation. Uh, I am not going because shortage of, we have shortage of time. Other presenters are there. Uh, mainly, I would try to touch upon that what kind of approach we made before the GIJ that please help us to know what are the major source of this pollution in the river Vidyadhari. Then, from the <coughs> from the uh, survey, we could see initially from the dates. Okay, no issue. Uh, from the um, baseline survey, we could see that there are uh, different channels through which the domestic sewage mainly and in some portion, some industrial wastewater, they are going to this river Vidyadhari. Then after this initial study, then from my office, myself, Dr. Shah and the team member, including Mr. Banerjee, the GIJ, on two days, we physically uh, visited all the sites, entire sites, and we could find that there are the three major channels. One channel which is carrying entire, at least 70% of the Calcutta city switch through, we, we have a unique system which is called <coughs> East, East, East Calcutta wetland management system through which it is finally discharged to river Biddhaduri and there from the input to output, the quality is within the standard. Then we could find there are other channels which is popularly known as Bagjola, then Kestapur and surprisingly the first point where we could notice that the beauty level was very high. There are five urban local 
municipality, we could not even in our plan program of Kolkata Metropolitan Development Authority, they are basically looking after urban wastewater management and water supply. They were not having any idea that that five municipal towns, there is no wastewater management. Only through this study, we could finally convince the Urban Development Department and Kolkata Metropolitan Development Authority that all these three, uh, five, that is Calcutta wetland which is carrying Kolkata city switch, Bagjola Canal, Kestapur Canal and there is another canal which is Noai Canal through which the wastewater from five urban local body, the northern part of the Kolkata metropolitan is every day is going to that river Biddhadari. And also they will have to take some major solid wastes. People are regularly throwing solid waste on the canals. So that was the source. And this is the major achievement through this study with the help of GIJ that we could convince from the Pollution Control Board to the local urban development agency Kolkata Metropolitan Development Authority that they will have to take some measures for control of domestic sewage in all these urban towns. And for your kind information, whatever measures they have already taken, whatever measures they have already taken, they have managed to control solid waste, they have taken a lot of solid waste management program. Already, the quality of the Vidyaduri River, it is came down from priority 1 to priority 2. Even in the last month, from the Pollution Control Board, we do undertake monthly monitoring. In the last month results, we have noticed that from priority 1 to it is now priority 3 within 10 milligram per liter, but still a lot of work to do. But the best thing from this study, what Urban Development Department and Kolkata Metropolitan Development Authority, the decision has been taken that instead of putting up a common Swiss treatment plant having capacity 170 MLD at one corner, first thing space is not there. Construction and operation maintenance is huge costly. And now they have decided work is an already progress. They have gone for a putting up Swiss treatment plant in a decentralized manner. And in some location, in some municipal town, which is highly densely populated, there is no space. I have personally visited several times. There is no space because after the, our study, Kolkata Metropolitan Development Authority and State Public Health Engineering Department initial idea was that wastewater is coming from the rural area, but it is certainly not. Kharagpur IIT. They were given a job to IIT Kharagpur for the detailed study. And through that detailed study, the final conclusion is that now Kolkata Metropolitan Development Authority, they are going to put up decentralized sewage treatment plant in different places wherever they have got the place, land. And where they have got, did not manage to get the land, then as I know, perhaps you all know that now, even in the national <coughs> NMCG, they have decided that putting up of fecal slag management system is a new concept which started with in Orisha, my friend is there and in other state now as a national policy NMCG has given a clear cut direction that wherever you are not in a position to putting up switch treatment plan you go for setting up fecal slag management facility so when we have got the land we will go we are going for putting up sewage treatment plant of different size and capacity and also FSTP and I am quite optimistic and hopeful that within because two and a half years time it will, need, it will be needed after two and a half years time the entire situation of the river Vidyadri because there is no more connection of getting fresh water from this uh, other river Sichamotiv there no connectivity present because due to development only regularly they are getting this wastewater and also this Ichamoti river is connected with Bay of Bengal. It is also a tidal river. In some portion it is also get tidal effect. But with the introduction of KMDA's intervention 
and basically that is why i am here today to convey a message to the people over here and all those who are online that we from the west bengal side from the west bengal pollution control board and urban development department this tool and this help and this activity of the gij finally had helped us to see that we have the problem in the urban local body and the solution instead of going a huge common sewage treatment plant the sewage treatment plant has to be constructed in a decentralized manner and wherever it is not possible we will have to go for a fstp and what is going on in full swing and we are hopeful the things will improve with this i will stop here and thank you for your patient hearing again i would like to convey on my behalf my colleague dr shah like to convey our sincere thanks and gratitude to roghubau and his entire gij team for supporting us thank you So now I would like to call upon speech best uh, Dr. Somnath Narayan to speak about environment clinics and environment cells. respected uh, dignitaries and delegates of this con conference i am dr somnath naran i was a uh, uh, former former state pollution control board senior environmental engineer 
and uh, former, I think, uh, GIG consultant of this project. So, uh, basically, uh, there are two presentations. Uh, one regarding this uh, environmental cell, but the other on the uh, environmental clinic. So, let me start with this environmental cell. So, let me give a very small background of this uh, West Bengal Industrial Development Corporation. Uh, there are total 19 industrial parks, out of which uh, 10 parks are land-based and 3 parks are plot-based or module-based. Uh, actually, land-based park means this uh, park having area of uh, greater than five to six acres of land and then uh, stretching about 2500 acres to 3500 acres it's like that and plot based parks are less than five to six acres now out of this uh, six are under development and uh, 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 and and registers uh, uh, totally occupied and uh, running uh, at in full capacity. Now uh, the before situation is like that. Uh, there was no environment cell in the uh, West Bengal Industrial De Development Corporation in the organizational structure, and it was also lacking in trained man manpower of environmental governance in the industrial parks. So WBIDC needed an expert intervention to institutionalize, to institutionalize environmental governance in the in industrial parks. Also industry associations required sensitization on environmental compliance. Industry association believed that the provision of common effluent treatment plant and other environmental infrastructures are the responsibility of West Bengal Industrial Development Corporation and vice versa is the case. Ms. W. IIDC also feel that the uh, industry association should uh, uh, start this uh, uh, construction of common effluent treatment plant and investments, whatever it is required. So there must be uh, uh, someone must in between. So how uh, uh, one should start all these activities in the, in the industrial parks. There was an immediate need of uh, common effluent treatment plant in three industrial parks. These are basically uh, food parks. Besides this, uh, there, there are uh, severe water locking problems in three, uh, three to four parks which I have seen and there is also problem of solid waste management in the industrial parks, especially in respect of integrated solid waste, man uh, solid waste management as per the solid waste management rule uh, 2016. Also there was not enough green means uh, peripheral green belt, central green area and uh, avenue plantation, etc. Next slide. On site, I think uh, now the regarding the methodology methodologies of this project, GIJ placed a uh, senior environmental expert at the WBIDC for 18 months to guide the establishing of the environmental cell. Uh, 10 numbers of industrial parks were uh, visited and assessed, and assessed the gaps and needs for requisite environmental infrastructures. On-site meeting with industry association about the problems they are facing, it was also discussed regarding the space constraint they are uh, facing due to, because uh, they are unable to expand their 
uh, effluent treatment plant. Uh, if uh, anybody requires to uh, requires to install this uh, 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 wastewater treatment plant of uh, physical, chemical, and biological treatment. Problem of seasonal water logging also and investment in it as productive. So we had a meeting with the executive director of WBIDC to know whether they had any preferred methodology for organizational capacity building. And uh, later it was decided that uh, only training lecture section, session will be uh, held along with the uh, field training of the officials attached to the cell. So we conducted 16 days of training comprising of 30 hours duration on various topics and six industrial parks were visited for field training on the officials at us to sale. Uh, we prepared Excel database on technical documents on, on environmental infrastructure development, prepared Excel database on environmental acts, rules, notifications, orders, etc. We also prepared Excel database of court cases, public complaints, directions, etc. And uh, we also uh, assisted WBIDC uh, in submitting proposal for environmental clearance and obtained tons of reference for their 2500 acres capacity of a new industrial park at Raghunathpur in Purulia district. Next one. No, it is complete. Ah. So here we to so I said So here, this uh, uh, how the needs and gas gap assessment was done in the in the industrial parks. So in this table, you could see that uh, there are 19 industrial parks, as I have mentioned. Out of that, uh, <coughs> these highlighted portions means these are already operating, and this uh, uh, highlighted with blue means these are under construction phase. And the uh, three numbers are white, uh, highlighted with uh, white. That's what is the module based. So uh, we, uh, what we have done, we have selected criteria uh, for conducting the need assessment: stormwater management, wastewater management, solid waste management, green and open space landscape, resource uh, efficiency in respect of rainwater harvesting, three R's principle: renewable energy and industrial. Air pollution control. So I would have to request you to kindly faster, faster. Bit faster. Yes, we are running. So this time. is the ha. Huh, this is the uh, uh, format we have developed for the study, and these are all uh, the photographs of my visit to the industrial parks. Next, 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 and uh, what are the outcomes? Environmental cell has been constituted by WBIDC with three staffs. The staff of environment sale are actively mentored and supported by GIS consultant on various environmental matters. Reference materials of technical documents compiled on environmental infrastructure development uh, categories. Reference materials compiled on environmental acts, rules, orders, and notifications are applicable to the WBIDC for their industrial parks. Five environmental clinics organized at five industrial parks involving around more than 200 industries, leveraging the GIJ out, outputs, guidelines of environmental infrastructure through capacity building program and needs assessment reports for industrial parks. Next slide. These are the uh, announcements of this uh, <coughs> uh, department of uh, uh, West Bengal WIDC regarding uh, establishment of this environmental cell. Next slide. Uh, 
uh, this is the uh, photographs of we have designed also a short term and long term this is a short term feedback form mm -hmm. and we have analyzed this uh, short term feed, uh, feedback forms this out of this uh, 42 lectures nine strongly agreed and 33 <coughs> uh, uh, agreed in this way we have assessed the quality of our training lecture sessions next one this is the long term uh, feedback form you could see that all the uh, three officials of the WIDC they have signed it next and uh, now next one is uh, environmental clinic so I have uh, written one definition what is an environmental clinic actually there was uh, uh, no clear definition of this thing so environmental clinic is a field level facility or a primary helpline where people could avail a preliminary advice information about techno legal aspects of environmental matters including management of industrial wastewater and flue gas emission, solids and hazardous waste and management, resource conservation, recovery and reuse, of, uh, reuse and energy <coughs> conservation, etc. So with this, next slide. So before situation was like this, industries operating off at industrial parks come across divergent issues and challenges in adopting sustainable practices, limited knowledge of industries on relevant environmental policies and regulations along with its probable implications to them. Industries have inadequate awareness on common environmental infrastructure and management at industrial parks. And what are the challenges? WBIDC has limited manpower and competence to understand different types of environmental issues faced by industries at industrial parks. WBIDC needs to take up dedicated initiatives to sensitize industries on relevant environmental aspects to move towards sustainable development in, in industrial parks and industries. Next, the actions taken. Environmental clinic has been introduced with the newly constituted environmental cell at WIDC, been given responsibility to, to conceptualize the subject. Around 200 industries have been advised or counseled through five numbers of environmental clinics. What are the results? Followed up with the industries to capture industries level of responsiveness and reciprocity to follow advices around 30 industries found the idea of green belt in their own premises and its benefits useful about 40 industries issues with the aspect of water logging stormwater confidence confidence treatment and disposal of effluent etc were addressed more than 90 percent industries appreciated the methodology of converting organic waste to compost and options to earn through selling compost, recycling, plastic goods, etc. Industries have started following the suggestions or advices, which has enabled improvement in production efficiency. Next, these are uh, some photographs of the environmental clinic, and these are the uh, validation I mean, testimonials from industries. Next, next, uh, you see this uh, <coughs> encircled remarks. This process is helping us to gradually improving towards enhancing this thing. Right. Second, all right. thank you no, so much. Sir. Thank you so much. Sir. I would now invite Ms. Deepthi Kapil, Senior Environment Engineer, CPCB, to elaborate the city building. capacity building of environmental regulatory agencies and its role in the strengthening of organization structures and procedures. Uh, very good afternoon to all. I think since morning uh, uh, everyone is talking about refresher training program uh, which is I think well received by all the participants at the state level and center pollution control board. But uh, what is the task that has been done? How we have achieved through the training modules? What was the methodology that was followed and uh, the results and way forward? So uh, I'll be discussing on those part. So as you know that environmental regulators have been given a very important role in control of pollution and our legislations uh, basically gives that power to the environmental regulators. But the challenges are increasing and then the technologies. 
so there is a continuous upgradation of the skills is required so with this objective uh, GIZ has come up with one of the focus area of strengthening the organizational structure and the processes where the main address was related to the capacity building of the employees of CPCB and SPCBs. Other than there was an activity of human resource development strategy exclusively that was also carried out under this project. Um, next please. So the base work for development of the refreshing training modules there was a training need assessment was carried out. Uh, that was carried out by uh, CR. And then uh, CPCB is basically following a uh, annual calendar with, which mainly focus about the environment components, what are required to be studied. A, a conventional, you know, training modules being developed where we only talk about air, water, noise. But during this training need assessment, it was realized that there are other focus areas which we need to focus. like. For example, presentation skills are required, how to write a report, which we never thought of. We typically thought how we can save. For saving the environment, we need to focus on those areas so, so that we can perform better and give the output. So that was one of the key uh, outcome came through the training needs assessment. Uh, not only through the survey, through the discussions, there were, you know, rigorous six groups were divided with at each level at B, C, D, E, F, uh, individual interactions were held. So through that only we came to know what are the focus areas, the areas which were identified were the core skill areas, the professional skill areas and how we can put forward together to make a training module. Next please. So uh, basically it was a component of induction training module where we can give uh, like for the entry level what will be the requirement so that that they can understand what will be the requirement for getting into the system of government and work according to the requirements that have been given to them. Then apart from that, interpersonal skills will be focused. What can be the, you know, how the presentation has to be done, how the data, we are collecting so many data. We were talking in the morning, lot of digital platform, but how to make a report from that, how to present that, that was also captured in one of the uh, session. Then leadership program, we all are going to, you know, upgrade our skills and the levels and how to work in that particular profile at that point of time and get the work done from other, uh, you know, role according to the role assigned to you that was also focused. And of course, then research and development, which we all are focusing, a lot of studies we are doing, we are preparing the reports, how to present it so that it can, uh, you know, uh, disseminate the information what we are trying to do and what we want the other uh, stakeholders to perform accordingly. So accordingly, this duration was divided into three days and five days. Five days was for the mid-level and three days was for the senior level. And it was a good mixture of a theoretical and practical session. This is just giving the glimpse what was covered in the three days program and five days. And... Uh, that was already, I will take through the pictures also giving you the glimpse how it was performed, how the, you know, uh, participants were involved during in the entire session. Next, please. So this was the outcome of the training need report. Uh, it was a mixture of uh, holistic, why we can say it, because it was including the technical sessions, focusing on the environmental laws, challenges, and then how to meet the, you know, compliances, what are the steps that are required to be followed apart from that, the professional skills. Mm -hmm. So here you can see everybody is involved and uh, I must say and I think you also have heard it from the state boards and of course I am from Central Pollution Control Board that it was well taken by all the participants and even we were re receiving the request please make it for us also. So I think sir, uh, in future state board can take away this model and then they can replicate for their state pollution control board employees. So there was a lot of leadership activities were there after each lecture, the participants were involved and given exercises. Not only exercises, after doing the exercises, they have to demonstrate what was their understanding. A group exercise was there. And one of the key, uh, you know, uh, session which was appreciated and well taken was the time management, which uh, in the morning session was also talking about. Uh, which has helped them uh, in performing the tasks, in prioritizing the things, what are important tasks they can take, how to, 
uh, prioritize their items because we all are having uh, numbers of items and with the limited resources we have to perform but how to achieve that target in a uh, you know in a uh, better manner so that we can perform our responsibilities so total nine training programs were organized uh, wherein 250 participants were there based on the initial uh, induction training program three workshops were uh, also organized for the admin staffs where we were realizing that uh, there are other admin staffs also, they were facing the uh, issues. Can you go to the back slide, please? They were fa uh, facing the issues on how to perform the task, how to also uh, get the, you know, there are certain areas which you can think that how to motivate the employees. So incentive mechanism was also one of the output that came through that one. Apart from that, delegation of powers. We need to give this and take away this that how we can delegate the powers so that our work is also perform better with the team efforts. Uh, next, next please. Uh, so finally, the output was basically the training module has been developed, which has been developed by uh, SIA. It is basically right now available in the portal and that can be assessed through all the participants. Uh, the state boards, I think they are also, they can download the things and uh, that can be further used by the employees. And then um, this is a well-structured program. We have come up with certain well-structured program which no, not only talks about the environment portion, it talks about the professional development also. We have to break the thing and we have to come up with a certain modern thinking also. So I think that is one of the learning from this uh, refreshing training program. Apart from that, uh, one more activity was carried out that was related to human, uh, human resource development strategy. Mm -hmm. We uh, constituted an in-house uh, task team for that, which was a mixture of admin staff, the technical, the lab, uh, and then we interacted with the experts from GIZ. Uh, we had to have, because that was a COVID period, so we, there were a lot of virtual uh, interactions were taking place. And we come up with certain uh, good concepts of human resource uh, development that was basically focusing on um, mentoring, shadowing, and uh, we are going to implement these things in future. That is in that next line, sir. So that is the outcome of the project and way forward from uh, CPCP side. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am. That's really, we're very glad to know that this is being appreciated so very well and being taken forward. Last but not least, I would like to invite Raghu sir, Program Director of CIP, to, to give all present here and watching us live insights into the successful approaches from SEEP to project. Yeah, this project uh, focused, as I was saying in the morning, on strengthening the operational governance when we want to strengthen the governance, uh, the boundaries range from the individual officer to the group of officers in a division, or then to the organization, and then the group of organizations. I think that's the range in which we are working. So I'll run, you, run through this presentation, uh, wherein we looked into where we stand in CPCD and what all should be done there. Please go on. So at the start, in these training programs uh, that we were conducting, uh, which are being so much so very well appreciated, uh, I myself took a few sessions because we wanted to conduct these trainings different from the training program that everyone anyone had ever attended before. Not just someone comes lectures and goes and then you make another lecture and goes. So we wanted it to be very very different. So in the lectures that I took in the beginning in in, in the performance management and uh, these elements, I was asking the participants. What is the current level of performance of your pollution control board? Some people said, the, the, the optimistic one said 7 out of 10, and other, many of them said it is between 3 to 5. Because the question was, you have those three acts, Air Act, Water Act, EP Act, how much you think you have been able to perform in totality of what has been mandated to you? Yeah, so that's the answer. Now, so there are many reasons why the performance levels go down. Next one. Then I was also showing to them about the organizational maturity model. That at the le lowest level, you are functioning ad hocly in a reactive manner. 
and at a next level it is a person driven some active person comes a chair person or a member secretary and pushes you then you have a standard operating procedure and more standardized and you go into a little bit of advancement with digitalization and then you have some kind of a, a feedback mechanism and a sustainability at level 5 so many of them agreed it's either at uh, one or two some chairpersons are very good and the organizations go very well someone else comes it goes very different so but it's not uh, that these organizations don't have standard operating procedures and digital no there are also there but overall in, when we look at organization in totality that's that's a picture next one so we took up uh, um, various activities to deal with this performance management one was to look at uh, analysis of the organizational structures and processes in cpcb to look at uh, refresh of courses for the officers because that became very obvious when we were looking into the overall organization that the individual officers were not getting uh, skill upgradation they have very complex responsibilities but not the matching uh, professional knowledge professional skills and core skills because these were not assessed regularly all of them are very qualified uh, you in, especially in central police control board they are very well qualified uh, officers uh, and scientists and engineers but the job challenges keep changing requiring different competencies as we grow in careers the other one was the hrd strategy so there was a very strong will from cbcd saying that uh, we need to move away from administration to human resource development as uh, deepthi rightly pointed out it's more at the moment more like administration but i think human resource development is a different ball game altogether the other activity was the digitalization strategy because digitalization is today seen as a means to improve the performance of the organizations and also to bring transparency the other one was to um, look at uh, um, digital applications uh, that they can already start putting to use and the development of knowledge products because that's all the, uh, many of these are actually mainstream functions as mandated in the acts next one so we looked into what kind of functions uh, cbcd has under different acts uh, broadly you can group them into these uh, seven categories they advise the government they do trainings they develop knowledge products they they also have special tasks special tasks in rights and court matters then we were analyzing how much these functions the next picture so it was shown that nearly 50 percent of the time is going into court matters some people even said 70 percent is going into court matters so every division is engaged into court matters and those additional tasks then what happens to the routine 17 tasks as mandated under the acts of course they get lesser in their performance which is not right thing to do so we uh, looked into international examples how they are performing like for example us epa has set up a separate legal division which will take care of all legal matters and the individual div divisions are free from that time so they don't have to work on that so we looked into for each of the problems that we identified we looked into what are the international examples and what can be done and discussed next one so organizational structure is another one so they have very horizontal structure with almost uh, 34 divisions and seven regional offices and so that's quite a lot all reporting to the member secretary who is then reporting to the chairperson so that is a uh, workflows wise that gets it very very complex you know, to have so many organizations divisions reporting to one single person it's not possible to make it effective or efficient so when uh, i'm saying this please when uh, you please reflect for your own organizations now how effective is your own structure in your organizations next slide so one other thing comes on the complexity of this uh, horizontal structure they are very hierarchical structures that means the orders and decisions come from top and reporting goes from the bottom and there is a long chain of people in this hierarchy so if someone in between is gone for a leave or anything else no then the flow workflows get stopped and get longer than normal and the delegations don't exist not much they are but not enough so this brings complexity to the or flat structure next one and of course then uh, we were uh, informing how can you regroup your uh, structures how have european environmental agency done it how is how has us environmental agency done it and others have done it 
and we said as of date it's more a collaborative approach which is more effective not these hierarchical top to down anymore so cpcd uh, instantly responded by setting up task teams one of the task team for was this human resource development strategy which worked very well there was a task team for developing national clean air program portal and uh, when we were asked to develop this portal we thought it might take quite a lot of time but in 4 months from start to launch it was done and thereafter the kind of uh, national clean air portal if you look at the complexity and elaboration of the portal uh, it has gone at least 100 times more than what i originally thought it we can reach i never believed cpcp can go that far but with this collaborative effort coupled with experts they reached at this today the prana portal is so very uh, com complex uh, in in the way you don't see it when you use it you don't see it but behind it is quite elaborate almost there are 6000 fields of information communication is online report generation is online you can see the data online financial transactions will now be online directly from the bank to your accounts everything has been made so structured and they that had prompted cpcb to think about uh, epr portal and epr portal also came up in a very similar way epr portal you heard from vinod babu they have very high ambitious targets in terms of plastic waste management so uh, so these collaborative efforts uh, are one into means we advocated and they have done that next one and so here we also give some recommendations of how you can group your uh, divisions uh, like us epa does it like air water land cpcb does it industrial pollution urban pollution some on air some on water so there is a mix of that so we said you need to rethink about your structures next one also we gave them some suggestions about how you can do but on the top of it in the training sessions all the groups were asked to work on restructuring their organizations and there are lots of recommendation now with cpcb i'm sure when you further work it out because i think there is there's a lot of technical input we had already given i think the best would be they themselves find a way out of it uh, maybe experts can guide them through but there are now recommendations to cpcb how to group this and restructure it it's a matter of now bringing that change into reality next one uh, similarly we looked into the staffing aspects yeah there are very limited staff for a huge country like india and this has been one of their long standing demands to the ministry that our staff must be increased which will not happen for sure i think these demands are pending for decades and this will not happen but then we looked into in this situation how are the other organizations performing us epa for example is uh, outsourcing non core functions trainings document development research uh, functions like this uh, it development it operations so on next one Uh, this also meant this also meant that the existing staff need uh, click on this uh, this also meant that the staff would need new capacities now new competences to perform because they may act, they may become now managers instead of doers so we need to change the roles so then we looked into uh, how to do that and this uh, hrd strategy has now been put in place which i think they are working on it to get it implemented uh, good to hear in the morning that uh, they already are thinking of engaging a hr expert manager and um, this training modules were also customized like this and in this whole training uh, development we had given them an approach besides actually doing trainings for this there is an approach given to them which they should now adopt for other trainings also next one yeah so here are the list of uh, functions which can be outsourced or uh, contracted out these we call as non core functional areas which can relieve them a lot from their routine work and use the time left for other good things which are main core functions next one uh, digitalization uh, you had a, a detailed lecture on this uh, i was very happy to hear from vinod babu in the morning that they already implemented some of those uh, recommendations and some of them are in the way uh, uh, which is a very good thing that that now they have a office which earlier they already had but they also are now implementing more and more the digital applications when i heard vinod babu i thought you are already moving to the next uh, century uh, that was really heartening to hear because it wasn't easy in the beginning they told us internet is bad your hardware is bad and the software is not adequate the chairperson said can you please do something to revamp this entire thing but i think now the numbers of servers they procured the cloud based server systems uh, the kind of uh, uh, structures put in place is amazing 
Yeah, so uh, that's a good, a good, good job done from CBCB side. Next one. Um, yeah, please go take the next one. Yeah, and there are a lot of knowledge products uh, made available now to CPCB. Knowledge, one of the functions in the acts is to develop these knowledge product guidelines, handbooks, and to give it to the state agencies uh, that they can follow them. So we have given quite a lot of them. Um, some of them are still uh, need to be put to use. Um, for example, we said industry classification system. You revamp your system and uh, align with the national classification. Uh, this is well understood by the chairperson, but I think there is still these internal processes to be put in place. Similarly, the lot of other products given CEDP guidelines, you heard how complex is CEDP planning and so on. So I think uh, uh, these all these products would need them to be applied uh, in uh, true spirit. And this will also require trainings to be conducted later on to make them used and so on. Next one. Yeah, so you heard about refresh course, just the pictures came through quickly. So here the most important is, you know, I'll say, go back to the last one. So the important is the previous slide. Uh, next one, next one, sorry, next one, next one. Yeah, so, uh, so you know, it was important for us to redo this training. So whenever you say you are doing trainings in your organizations, please change the way you have been doing it. Take uh, learnings from the way these trainings were done, which got almost 100% positive response from everywhere. I've seen personally myself, how happy the people were, they were laughing, enjoying the training sessions. I have not seen that kind of a positive energy in the usual trainings. So you can follow this approach for all the other modules you want to develop in future. Next one. Yeah, you just click through. This is in Karnataka, Pollution Control Board, CPCD. Yeah, please click through. There are a lot of these games in the sessions and I think in some trainees, they worked up to 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock. CPCB team especially. They kept on working. We had to tell them, go for dinner. <laughs> yeah, hold on. So here we have uh, various recommendations given on the structures, restructuring, on the staffing aspects, processes, because they're also not following processes well. So many times, they, it's a top-down orders. You issue orders, but then they don't get implemented uh, in terms of pollution control. And uh, so the governance go, doesn't go well. So it might take longer, like the best available technique reference document we are developing now, it takes three years time. Initially they said, we have no time for three years. But we said, if you do anything too fast, it will not get impl uh, uh, implemented. It, you need to consult your stakeholders. You Issuing an order is very easy, but getting implemented needs a process. Everyone needs to be engaged into that. So we had those training sessions, but we are also requesting them advising them to get those processes in place. Knowledge management is another issue. And uh, performance management, we had trained them on how to manage your performance. When you say your performance is 7 out of 10 or 3 out of 10, now we told them, how can you measure your performance and how should you aspire to get 10 out of 10. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. The tea is being served at the tables now. Uh, I'd like to request my colleague Yashoda to please come and give a token of appreciation to our presenters. After which we will have a group photograph. Yashoda, please, to Iti, ma'am. Can we have a group of Yashoda, can you please now present the token of appreciation to Dr. Tapas Kumar Gupta? Dr. Somnath Narayan? Member Secretary Chairman, sir, or Member Secretary CPCB will be joining us in another 10 minutes. So I'd like to open up this round of uh, hall for any questions that you might like to ask.
so i like to ask dipti ma'am uh, how means the states all the state sports are means very very much interested in conducting the training program the refresher training course for their officials but some of the board the larger boards of course they have funds and other things they can do it on their own but some of the small boards like from the north east and other uh, they are looking forward means up to cpcb how they can support in conducting these training programs for them so actually uh, based on the outcome of this uh, you know training refresher training pro program what we have done of course uh, most of the states are doing their own and uh, have initiated doing this program on their own but there may be certain states so we are in process how we can take forward this for other state boards and of course for the other employees which are going to come in uh, future going to join uh, they will also be benefited so system is going to be developed for the same and uh, this is for uh, mr rabubabu in fact uh, the kind of uh, the presentation you identify identified the the key areas of uh, development uh, i mean or transferring the state pollution control boards and the central police we are working on the central pollution control board which eventually i hope and wish that uh, gets uh, transferred to the state pollution control boards uh there are uh, in my opinion there is a few areas one area is that uh, because we know what are the objectives to control pollution wholesomeness of water and all that uh we what we are doing now we are changing and trying to change the structures and uh, we are also upgrading the schemes through training and all these things there is one area that remains uh, to be addressed uh, is at the tools that they use for example for any uh, thing to do we need a skilled person we need a good quality tool to Uh, you know, achieve uh, the goal or objective. Now, the tools are the procedures that uh, you know we develop, and uh, the kind of we use various procedures. Because uh, what I find that when uh, we got, particularly after this training program, so many of them they were really, really very, very happy about the training program. But when they come back and then they use the same kind of tool, then they end up saying that okay, it's of no use. Ultimately, we have to do those things. So my request would be. that uh, we put cpcb as well as uh, the other just to look into those aspects that uh, if we can increase the i mean develop, improve the efficiency of the procedures that is being uh, followed uh -huh. under different times thank you yeah uh, thank you for asking that you know that that's a, an important area the standard operating procedures no for example for the ec compliance we have now given them um, guidelines for guidelines and sops for inspections it's not that each one inspects differently now you pointed out very right actually we these kind of trainings uh, were meant to bring up open up these thoughts towards what is needed for us now i'm happy that someone asked you back where are my tools and procedures no now we need to work on that we need to really work on that and i think uh, funds is if you have funds you can always get it uh, from the market now they are institute in fact incidentally Uh, the director of uh, niri was in the office yesterday dr subramanyam uh, brought them there so uh, he was saying we are available to them if they are our resources and the, our scientists and our experts are available to you i think similarly there are a lot of training institutes in the country who are quite capable i think also in terms of promoting our expertise in the country promoting our own organizations who sometimes are getting underutilized uh, we need to find mechanisms so what you should be looking at like gz no gz uh, will be there when the project is there this project is ending next week and we will not be there on this project we are there but this project is ending so but i think uh, uh, if you have seen the solutions we have not really brought any big rocket science into it many times it was customized locally now this bijadari example when we looked into we found it was a matter of uh, assessing it properly the whole watershed and you will appreciate this was done through interns from iit kharagpur not even any senior expert on that and they were quite happy with that of course they were because like uh, tapas he is quite experienced and he has his expertise he just needed someone to support that process and to give him these new ideas 
and immediately to get us happy to hear that it's now becoming priority three from one so many times i think uh, this is what we thought you know many times it's a matter of identifying the problem and you will get a solution be it giz be it neeri be it anyone else dr subramanian wanted to add something once again thank you rao babu for the excellent presentations by all the presenters what i would like to convey in very clear terms the following you see the refresher training programs which have been made successful through the intervention of the gis and involvement of the central pollution control board now this needs to be institutionalized this has to be institutionalized and mainstreamed in the environment of the governments what i meant is that when i am saying that mainstreaming in environmental like governments since i came from the ministry of environment forest and climate change with my little experience having spent there more than 35 years we had been hopping on and on for having this sort of a training activities for the scientists of the ministry central pollution control boards and state pollution control boards at the same time we have the indian forest service officers they have a plan scheme training per se so what cpcb should do with this kind of a successful as a success story you should put forward to the ministry and ministry people they should try to integrate it in their plan schemes as a plan scheme exclusively for training and under the training who are all the people to be included central pollution control board officials state pollution control board officials ministries the scientists ministries the regional offices scientists all these people they need to be Uh, their skills need to be upgraded so unless this is institutionalized and mainstreamed as long as rabu babu is there in the giz and as long as gp giz is there if a positive frame of mind like vinod babu is there things will happen otherwise they will fall down like anything so this is my personal humble request to the cpcb maybe when the prashant garva comes i will also tell him the same way he should cpcb should take up this matter with the ministry and try to put it in the as a one of the plan schemes and then you see the, the as rahu babu was telling that in the training at programs the people are very happy our people also will be happy the ministries people they don't go out of their four walls we are getting very honest so how best they could be able where are these other service people service cadre people they go out and they 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 enhance their skills whereas the scientists they are not in there so therefore it is all the more important to upgrade our own skills so my humble request is kindly take it forward this should go as one of the recommendations yeah now that's an important point in fact the whole discussion that we are having today and inviting you was also that you know you please take these learnings back i mean you're all experienced in your own fields and uh, uh, these products are available the cases are available Uh, please adopt them in your institutions. And uh, uh, one good thing uh, is that I've seen is all these two hundred forty plus people that we had uh, trained. Um, I mean, there's a lot of energy, and there we could see them. You know, they're asking for change, uh, which was not so much in the past. I'm sure Deepthi will agree with me, isn't it? There's that that energy we see that they want to make a change. In fact, you know, I I was also provoking them. We have about one hundred and thirty crore population to be cared for. and don't forget our fathers and our daughters and our children are part of that population if you don't do job well we will also suffer yeah uh, but i've seen the good part is i've seen that people are willing to do bring a change but i think there was there is this issue of you know they are feeling not empowered they are not feeling capacitated and they are also lost in this whole challenge that has emerged over time and it has not happened overnight it has happened over a period of time as i showed if 50% of your time goes into uh, court matters which are very important legal issues how would you focus on the 17 other functions yeah so the kind of time that was going into other functions were ranging from 3% to 5% so they're not able to concentrate so uh, at the same time i've seen like cpcb if you see they are working day and night 
and uh, you know it's also stressing them out so that's not the way to do that i think all of us need to uh, gear up our challenges will increase as we grow by because the country is growing positive in a positive way and our targets of the country development are very very high so if you want to deal with that kind of uh, development and target the challenges will continue and and there is a willingness which we need to i think address it well yeah so that will be one thing so we have come uh, to the right thing dr prashant gargav is here and we go to the next session then yeah thank you for asking those questions i mean the, personally for me these are very uh, important elements in terms of uh, how we can protect uh, environment and bring sustainability thank you so much I would also like to invite Mr. K. S. E., Chairman of Tripura State Pollution Control Board, to also share with us with the other distinguished guests. Before we begin with the final closing remarks from our dignitaries, we'd like to show a small presentation from Mr. Pranath Tiwari on the online environmental self-assessment tool. We would like to launch the brochures as well. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. So it's being a long uh, but knowledge-filled day today, and uh, finally uh, I got an opportunity to present uh, our um, uh, self-assessment uh, environmental tool. So uh, in the morning session, Ruab started uh, referring to uh, uh, raising a child as a journey, and then um, then uh, the child giving board uh, as a milestone, and um, and, uh, and then he uh, continued referring uh, the SEIP project as a journey and today's uh, conference as a mind. And this gives me an opportunity to congratulate the entire GIZ team, Dr. Raghu Babu, for uh, providing us an opportunity to be part of the, uh, the C uh, project and also providing the opportunity to present and finally launch our online um, environmental uh, uh, management and compliance self-assessment tool. 
So I would like to uh, introduce uh, this tool to you all. And uh, so this tool is basically uh, the MSET. MSET is an abbreviation for Environmental Management and Compliance uh, Assessment Tool. Next, please. Yeah. So it's, it is an online self-assessment tool designed to assist MSMEs in India to assess their units uh, environmental compliance. This tool is envisaged as a guiding tool to facilitate an understanding of environmental compliance amongst the MSMEs. Uh, provides an user relevant and user friendly uh, tool navigation as well as knowledge repository for useful uh, information access. So in this tool, no data of the user MSMEs uh, is kept on the MSAT server except for the data fields asked for uh, the registration. The report so generated on the self-assessment tool is emailed only to the registered user. The report generated by the MSAT does not, I, uh, I want to stress, uh, does not certify the environmental compliance of the user MSME. Next one. So at the top of the pyramid, this tool provides a confidentiality of the data and report applicable to most of the MSMEs in India. It's a self-assessment uh, of the present environmental compliance. The industry themselves can kind of do a self-assessment to, uh, to understand uh, at what stage of their compliance is for the environmental compliance. Is a user-friendly MSAT uh, portal with uh, useful uh, knowledge repository. Next, please. So, uh, we at EMC has provided a dedicated staff uh, uh, consisting of the subject expert, regulatory expert, uh, experts, research assistant, web designer, and IT experts to maintain a, a server management, data protection and data security, content management, payment management, troubleshooting. So this will be uh, the part of activities uh, which we would take care of it and with a motivation that it should be able to generate large scale awareness uh, on uh, environmental compliance and a self assessed uh, industry specific compliance status report which it which would be an output uh, outcome of this self assessment. Uh, this gives me an opportunity to invite uh, uh, Dr. Garvey, uh, uh, Dr. Babu, and Sir Yu to uh, please uh, come and officially uh, launch it uh, by clicking uh, on the link. May I request you to please do so? so but, uh, but I guess you have to do it there. <laughs> so, yes, yeah. to you. Because we, um, uh, this was initially developed, and uh, later on, MSME Foundation they said since they have MSME segment. Uh, for them, this, such an online self-assessment tool will help their members to check their compliances and accordingly make corrective actions. So Dr. Prasad Modak, many of you know him, he uh, took this up with MSC Foundation, they did retrofitting. Yeah, now honors to you, Dr. Gargo, for being there. And uh, thank, thank you, you yeah, thank Prasad, you. for uh, making this happen with the MSC Foundation. And please do report to us how many MSEs are uh, complying after using this. I will, sir. It will be an opportunity and we will uh, keep you posted, keep you updated. And we want to see this as an, again, a knowledge awareness. We want to generate awareness amongst the MSMEs, particularly the micro MSMEs regarding the environmental compliance. And we want that they, they will have certain fears for the regulatory, but since this is a self-assessment, they can do it themselves and uh, it will be an opportunity for them to understand where they stand. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. So now I'd like to, for the closing session, I would now like to invite Mr. K. S. Sethi, Chairman Tripura State Pollution Control Board, to share his thoughts from the state's perspective.
So, uh, first of all, uh, let me take this opportunity of uh, complimenting the GIZ and the CPCP for this excellently and very well organized national conference. For me, uh, specifically, I can say that uh, it was uh, it was a very well. Uh, uh, I was very happy with that. I agreed that I decided to come and attend this. It was a very lot of learning experience for me, specifically because uh, very recently only I've taken over as the chairman of the Pollution Control Board of the state. So, um, uh, in terms of so uh, while in the state, uh, looking at the uh, various uh, uh, modalities for uh, ensuring environmental compliance, uh, many many of the issues that we that we faced. Uh, several of them were addressed here today, and to that extent, uh, uh, it was uh, a very good, uh, very good conference. And I would like to specifically also say that the, the learnings from the conference, in terms of uh, some of the things that have been flagged, in terms of whether we need to restructure, we need to restructure the state pollution control boards. Because these are the, uh, the the present structure of the state pollution control boards has been set up long time ago. In the meanwhile, a lot of new challenges are being faced uh, by the state pollution control board. So uh, I think there is a there is a urgent need for restructuring the state pollution control boards. Also in terms of capacity building. So these are these are uh, issues that need to be addressed urgently. Specifically, quite appreciated the the presentation made by Deepthi uh, from CPCB, highlighting the different uh, 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 prog different programs of the capacity building that were uh, rolled out as a part of the program, and that have been also positively appreciated by the different state pollution control boards. And I echo the same sentiment. And uh, uh, from the states, from my state, uh, <clears throat> my uh, different scientists have also uh, highlighted the need for this capacity building programs to be taken up urgently. The digitalization pr program that has been highlighted today is absolutely urgently necessary. In uh, in Tripura, although we are a small state and a correspondingly s small state pollution control board, and with challenges much less compared to the bigger uh, pollution control boards of other states, even there, we felt that the digital digitalization process that we had undertaken in the state has gone a long way in meeting the, some of the challenges that we faced. And I'm sure it will be much, much, its uh, utility will be felt much, much better uh, in the bigger, bigger states where the state pollution control boards face correspondingly larger uh, uh, challenges. Also, in terms of the flow of technologies, so new technologies also need to be because there is now a lot of new technology coming in. So uh, we would request that the CPCB as well as the GIZ, although this program has ended, but the GIZ through new programs perhaps can speed up the flow of new technologies to the states. Uh, uh, specifically, those states where, uh, like the northeastern states, where the where the flow of uh, technology and flow of capacity building is relatively slower. So uh, I think that uh, these are the new things that we need to look at, and uh, with the addressing of these few points, the functioning of the state pollution control boards can be vastly improved, and also in terms of uh, funding. I would like to highlight that uh, the current funding program of the CPCP as a support to the state pollution control boards is though very good. But still, there are many new points that could be added. The funding flow could be augmented specifically for those states where, where their own resources are quite less and uh, the much more support will be required for them to discharge their uh, uh, constitutionally mandated functions of environmental compliance. So with these uh, few words, I'll end my address here. Thank you.
you very much, Dr. Siti. Now I would like to invite Dr. Prashant Gargav, Member Secretary, Chairman, Member Secretary, Central Pollution Control Board, to say his closing remarks. Thank you, Kutika. Chairman, Tripura Pollution Control Board, Mr. Agubabu, and I see a lot of friends, colleagues, mentors, Dr. Sabrinoli here, you know, who has been, uh, you know, guiding us on various environment related activities. Uh, good to be here. Uh, in fact, I wanted to come in the morning as well. But uh, you, as you know, you know, tracking, uh, you know, push and pull from here and there, multiple activities clashing with each other, so I didn't, I couldn't make it possible in the morning. Nonetheless, it's uh, good to be part of this one day you know, conference that you had. Uh, it's closing, so I won't take much time. Our collaboration with uh, ZIZ has been extremely, extremely useful. Not only during this you know, four year of SEIP2, but uh, even before that. Uh, as you know, we have been taught since childhood that knowledge is the key for success. Uh, we were also told knowledge and happiness grow when shared. So I think this collaboration is, is you know, one of the ways uh, to acquire knowledge, to spread knowledge and then progress. Uh, from that perspective, our collaboration with GIZ has been extremely useful. In the last four years, we worked together in multiple areas. One of course, as you mentioned, and Deity also must have presented about uh, capacity building uh, uh, for our human resources. Uh, as I heard when I uh, came in, uh, Mr. Go was mentioning about uh, our development aspirations and the challenges you know, that we are facing as a country today. And certainly when we have to face these challenges, we need to continuously upgrade ourselves, our knowledge, uh, the technologies that are around us to help us. So from that sense as well, this partnership has been useful. Uh, we have been able to roll out uh, a structured uh, training program for officials of the state and also central pollution boards at various levels, uh, be it senior level to middle level, to laboratory people, to administrative people. And collectively, you know, with uh, learning together, growing together, uh, we'll be able to uh, meet uh, the newer challenges. Uh, with regard to industrial pollution, it talks about industrial pollution. There are two or three very important. I'm sure you must have had, you know, chance to look at in details as well. Uh, the brief that we had initiated uh, for textile sector, uh, while we in CPCB uh, were preparing complex industry documents that had more or less, uh, you know, similar components, uh, but the approach that also makes a difference, you know. One consultation could be you put it on the website, say we have put it in the public domain and then, you know, we have taken everyone's view. Uh, other uh, approach is that you, you know, approach different target groups, you know, on their own, discuss with them, tell them the, you know, details and get the inputs. So, so the approach also makes a difference. I am sure that this uh, prep document for textile uh, would bring in uh, the best practices that is being followed in European Union, especially in Germany and then about uh, uh, development of a standard or standard setting process uh, would get enriched. Last two, three years, you know, when we were discussing within CPCB before this uh, brief uh, collaboration happened, uh, we were also thinking as to we should be, uh, you know, doing something innovative now when we are framing our standards, uh, not, you know, looking into uh, only, uh, you know, the current uh, technologies, uh, process technologies, pollution control technologies, uh, but also uh, you know, see future is taken. In fact, I have been advocating this for many, many years and before I, you know, took charge of member secretary that when we publish our standards, we should also be, you know, suggesting draft standard for next 10 years, 20 years. So that, you know, industry, you know, is prepared as to what is coming now. So if next five, 10 years time, you know, uh, they get some sort of roadmap to develop their technologies. But somehow, you know, it uh, did not happen because we have to notify the standards which becomes law of the land and therefore a progressive suggestive standards probably you know did not go well with 
uh, that is in later, but uh, you know this is something we should be you know looking at. Uh, then we also uh, you know when we set up standards, I'm specifically talking with reference to PREF that we are working on. Uh, when we prescribe standards, uh, we only look at uh, the particular nominal component. If you are looking at effluent, then you are only looking at effluent. And the cross cutting issue, you know, when you are prescribing zero liquid discharge or not looking at the energy requirement in case somebody has to use a multi effective operators kind of thing. So uh, uh, we are trying to you know, bring in all these issues that when you develop standards, look at uh, in a very holistic manner the entire limit of environment and then prescribe the standards. So there are a lot of learning which comes you know, through the, you know, discussion together, uh, bringing in different thought processes at one place, learning from you know, experiences uh, from elsewhere and that's how you go. The one that was launched here, the self-assessment, you know, I think I'll limit, but uh, just a couple of things. Uh, as far as industrial pollution control is concerned, uh, I'm pretty convinced that only option is the self-regulation. You can't, you know, send your state boards team very frequently to all the polluters and then, you know, try and enforce their standards. It also is difficult, you know, technology use also there is a limit and because it requires resources. And we started looking at online monitoring systems uh, in industries, uh, but then when you have to deal with, you know, millions of industries, at least five, six lakhs industries, I'm told we have uh, polluting industries uh, in our country. So, so many industries for so many parameters and then looking at data, even if you have AI and other tools and techniques, you know, it is quite uh, cost intensive. So, we'll have to bring in some sort of culture of self-regulation within industry and have a very robust, you know, audit and then uh, I always believe that enforcement, you know, happens, don't, don't, uh, you know, uh, monitor each and everyone, monitor randomly uh, uh, and then if you catch somebody who is a willful defaulter, then make sure, you know, that uh, the action taken is such uh, that it doesn't get repeated not only by the defaulter, <coughs> but, but, but many around them. So take a stringent action against willful defaulter, publicize it so that you know it gives a message uh, to else. So there are a lot of you know uh, new uh, uh, thinking, new ideas that we should be continuously working on if we have to deal with uh, the growing challenges. So I'm glad that this four year uh, though it is ending, we are looking forward to further you know, extending uh, this collaboration. Uh, in any case, the work that has started uh, will continue. Uh, I'm sure with your collaboration, otherwise also uh, whatever learning that we have, we will continue on our own as well. It's not to say that all the areas you know, will be able to provide support, uh, but uh, you know some of the areas where we have picked up, and uh, we also will work on our own. And uh, all these three, four, we had a lot of you know, digitalization work. We had very successful experience. Uh, Sonal is sitting here, Mr. Rava. Glad to see him. You know he has been instrumental in putting forward a very good document uh, on digitalization. We had uh, this plastic EPR and also Prana portal uh, that has been very successful. Uh, other portals also of course uh, are being done. Uh, in CBCB we have, we are working on uh, putting up analytical cell. So a lot of activities are happening and this is all, uh, you know, uh, probably uh, became possible with our collaborators and support from ZIZ, uh, especially uh, Mr. Raghu Babu, uh, because he is our, uh, you know, friend, close friend. So, uh, you know, we can have that liberty of uh, freely, you know, asking him uh, without uh, getting into the, uh, you know, that diplomatic uh, uh, thing between two countries. Uh, we can straight away demand him, Raghu, this is what we want. <laughs> uh, and then and then we want you to manage how to do your job. <laughs> so, he has been very kind and very supportive for all through. Uh, with this, uh, I think I'll close. It's uh, almost 5 o'clock now. You have had a long day, but I'm sure must have been a very fruitful day. Uh, thank you very much for giving this opportunity. And look forward to seeing you all again, working with all of you very closely uh, for betterment of environment, our country, our people. That's what we're working for. That's what we live for. And uh, of course, a continued uh, uh, support. Mr. Raghubabu and the entire team. Thank you, thank you very much.
So now I'd like to call my colleagues Vishal Vinod and Simar Kindra to summarize today's events. Vishal, Simar. summarize what we have been discussing here today. Um, so we started with the concept of digitalization wherein uh, we see how it is a it is a crucial point in moving forward, mo taking this project forward in phase two. Uh, so digitalization is the way forward because it presents a one-stop solution wherein all data can be accessible to the public, to the regulatory bodies, to all the industries and all stakeholders of this project. Um, it also allows public dissemination of this data and it allows an ease of the regulatory processes involved. So through digitalization, the case examples that we have seen, uh, we see how it helps governance, it improves access to technologies and the best practices pertaining to industrial wastewater treatment specifically as we saw through these case examples. And in a way, it also helps us identify the scale gap and uh, rectify that in the long term. Uh, now, Vishal will uh, summarize the second. Yeah. Um, so then we moved on to another leg of the project, which was to look at knowledge products and the dissemination of these knowledge products. Uh, so we had uh, we had speakers talking about ETPs and CETPs and how we how we assess these and looking at the financial feasibility and the viability of these things. And, uh, and what is most important here is that in preparation of these guidance documents, it becomes easy to, to replicate and duplicate these things further. And that is why the knowledge product part of this project was so important. And as we've seen today, we've looked at the CETPs and ETPs part of that. And uh, the third output of this project was incentive mechanisms, where we, we encourage industries and uh, reward them for better environmental practices and in effect reducing uh, environmental pollution load and also easing the enforcement mechanism. So it will also ease the stress of uh, regulatory bodies like CPCB and the SPCBs. And uh, then we looked at the strengthening of organizational structures and processes, which seemed, which clearly comes out as a flagship activity of this project where we uh, did the refresher training program and uh, CPCB has been extremely proactive with this in taking this forward and you know, engaging training institutes to to uh, continue this and sustain this for the other SPCBs as well as for the CPCB as well. And this really is a mark of internalizing these organizational structures and processes and smoothening that. And we also learned about the environment in clinics and environmental cells, which shows how the interaction between industries and the regulatory bodies should not be, it should not be so hierarchical. There should be more of a dialogue between both of them and only then can we really engage in a participatory stakeholder approach you know and, and reduce environmental pollution load frankly and uh, yeah I, I hope uh, I hope this conference was a good learning experience to further replicate all of these activities and uh, and all these activities that were done by GIZ along with the partners and close coordination with the partners, the regulatory bodies and yeah and to learn more about the project we also have uh, created uh, some posters and uh, uh, interactive pin-up boards where uh, you can go through each activity in detail and we'll 
guide you through it and help you uh, with all your questions that you have. Thank you so much. Um, we'd also be uh, clicking a group photograph right now. So could you all please wait back for that? Uh, we'll do I'm going to request Mr. Raghu Babu sir to address the gathered audience now. Probably that's not they have already summarized everything there is left. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, I have to thank Mr. Sir because he has also summarized well that I don't have to do much more left now. But I think uh, one of the main things what Dr. Subramanian said, institutionalizing. I think this was the main reason for this conference. How do we institutionalize all those uh, solutions we found were very relevant and could be implemented. So I think uh, both our youngsters have nicely summarized, be it about digitalization, knowledge products, organizational structures, capacity building measures, all those that we talked about. I think if these can be implemented across the institution, be it industrial agencies, be it pollution control boards, I think we will uh, definitely be able to improve our performances, also make lives of our own staff uh, better uh, if we implement all those mechanisms in place. So while we have run through so many activities in four years, and you have seen also, uh, Dr. Subramanian was also very appreciative of the C1 video, which was very similar to this. In fact, we use the same use track as the first one to now. And you also have seen that so across these photographs, you would have seen so many people involved. Uh, government agencies, private agencies, different technologies involved, and different case examples put in place, and uh, people everywhere. You've seen people, people, people everywhere. There were so many people getting engaged into these activities. So it was a massive effort. Um, some got very successful, some got, some, as Vinod Babu said, work in progress. And some, he said, work in planning. And also Dr. Gargo has also given the right perspective there. Uh, in fact, when he said, uh, we are world friends, yes, we are world friends. In fact, the india German cooperation is based on friendship. It started in 1972, and that friendship continues, and in, officially they do mention that this is a strong friendship that continues to be there. Also, we are lucky to be old friends, and lucky that we are also able to contribute in our own positions in a, in a nice way. Yeah, while this task is so big, and we have done so much, but we also have two of our experts who had a bigger task of evaluating this work. So, yeah. So, Christine Rowland and uh, Rekha uh, Rawat, I think it has also been uh, present to have you, particularly it, it somehow matched with this conference. I know how tedious it would be to go around all these places, and she's coming from Germany, uh, to go around and look at the places and have our feelings. And yeah, we really appreciate that you could take our time, come over, meet our people, talk to them, and definitely we look forward to your recommendations and suggestions on this. And uh, yeah, as a part of the proceedings today, you've seen, uh, my team, we all love plants, no? So we all love plants. And in our conferences, we always give these little, little plants. There are some of them lying on my table. I request Ashwada to please hand over two of our those little plants to Christina and Rekha. And uh, yeah, we uh, are uh, very much thankful to CPCD, especially Dr. Gago. Uh, you heard him also say it. Uh, he is also fortunately been the staff of CPCD, so he did, does understand. He was the one who was really striving to bring that change. And we all know bringing a change has a lot of resistance. Uh, but in this case, he has taken a, a good step of uh, uh, engaging them all into these training sessions. Uh, when we said uh, even the admin staff seems to be having uh, problems, in fact, he has also asked us that we do sessions for the admin staff. They themselves voluntarily came with a lot of suggestions for delegating the work to their subordinates and making life easier for them. And I think a lot of those proactive things were done. Unfortunately, Deepthi, I mean, we are very, very happy with uh, Deepthi being an engineer but working so much for this human resource development. Uh, I think the, all the uh, good things you heard about these trainings, all credit goes to her. Uh, she has been. Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, I was honestly speak in one of these last uh, closing sessions of one of the trainings. I've seen so much of uh, you know uh, smiles and energy in those people that came for the trainings. Yeah, so it's very good that you know that motivation, zeal to do good things work, and I think we just need to channelize. And we have given you a uh, lots of those uh, entry points to make uh, officers' life better as well as perform better and improve our operational governance. There are lots of entry points. We had very pleasant uh, reporting coming from West Bengal, Dr. Gupta and uh, uh, colleagues, uh, that uh, priority one, Bijadari became priority two, and as per the recent monitoring, it is priority three. I think that's fantastic uh, uh, thing we could see. And also the CETPs who have failed in five times in Bihar have now become successful in getting an operator in place. In fact, Prabhu, this river stretches uh, 351, uh, 19 to 21 data, we excluded 20 because of uh, COVID, uh, 180 river stretches have shown improvement. Okay. And 108 have come out of the list of political stretches. Of course, with uh, more monitoring, new stretches have come. So total now figure from 351 has come down to 311. But 108 uh, came out of the list of political stages. Okay. That is a good you know, tremendous good achievement by all the state uh, the state agencies, not only police but other as well. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Also, we are thankful to all of you that have travelled from outside. Uh, we have uh, TSIAC. We have uh, colleagues coming from Odisha. Uh, our old uh, colleagues, uh, Neha. Thank you for being yeah. there, contributing to the discussions. Uh, yeah, Mr. Sham Sundar has been. One of the champions in this whole uh, industrial park transformation. We started with them uh, way back in '95, and uh, he is uh, he looks very calm and bright, but he is the one who has been the driver of change in their organization. And right now, he is the one who is steering the relocation of polluting industries from Hyderabad, and they are doing it so nicely. I'm quite impressed the way they deal with this complex topic. He has got a very good team with him there, and yeah, Dr. Subramanian has been the mentor, as rightly said, Rubab has been mentor, has been with us all the time. Uh, thank you all for being with us and uh, I have to uh, thank all the colleagues that have uh, contributed. Now when uh, we get confronted with some topics like digitalization, especially when pollution control board wants to promote technologies and uh, bring in uh, friendliness, it sometimes becomes a bit tedious. For example, self-assessment. If you make one parameter missing in that assessment, and those people will tomorrow say, it's your tool and we were complying and if you missed, it's your problem, not ours. But here, uh, Dr. Prasad Badak uh, uh, and uh, Pranlad, they have taken over that. And thank you also MSME Foundation that you volunteered to take this up. Uh, we also have uh, Trusha Desai who volunteered to run the technology platform as a private model. So we're also thankful that some people have volunteered to take those risks and come in the market. So he, Trusha Desai today was saying that he's already in the direction of sustaining. It's a private-led technology platform for wastewater treatment uh, technologies. So he provides information and he does B2B meetings and matches the technology requirements of the industry. And these are very much similar to the technology platforms of Germany and Europe. And maybe we should move towards more and more technology platforms on clean air, waste management, plastics, and all the other topics. And these will be private uh, collaboration, which will strengthen the hands of the pollution control agencies. And uh, we also have lots of training institutes. I think we should move towards strengthening collaborations with the training institutes. And yesterday, Director Neeri was uh, with us in the office, uh, but just came for a coffee out of, uh, because he came there. And he was saying, we are available uh, if CBCB or anyone wants. My team of experts and scientists are with you if you need. I think they just need finances and commitments. And he will make available his research teams, his uh, other personal experts with you to you. So we have all that. And uh, so I think uh, that's a positive energy we were seeing. So it's for you as organizations to bring all that energy together and move forward in the right way. And uh, with that, I would also like to thank uh, my own team, um, who has been working remotely uh, in Uttarakhand, in Bihar, in West Bengal, and in Delhi office. And also in the COVID times, uh, also it has been a big challenge for everybody. But uh, uh, that we never stopped working, actually. We never stopped. Uh, we have our cloud-based systems and remotely. We meet every day even now. And uh, so we have kept on uh, uh, those energies intact. And we share our uh, problems and we deal with that. And also we had to cope up with our own challenges in the COVID times. And yeah, we came out of it somehow. And 
but work wise we continue we never complained we have covid or we have any uh, restrictions we the, the work never stopped uh, so thank you all for that uh, thank you rishi thank you uh, amit sabhishachi thank you for all the good works uh, done anil uh, deradu and uh, we have a relentless team working behind <coughs> yashoda dharmendra uh, have been um, the soul of this whole uh, activity behind uh, to bring in all those contractual arrangements administrative arrangements financial management we never had any significant internal control, which is a great job for the team and uh, yeah so sonal you did mention she is quite active on clean air clean air uh, going for, uh, forward of course we have also two engineers here uh, uh, I, i think it was like throwing them in the pool they were not very well prepared for it but they did a good job um, and kritika uh, has also been the one who has been if you have seen these nice booklets and brochures Uh, for the clean air they released by the minister who was appreciating it was simar and kritika who were doing all that job so in fact uh, also snigta he is here she is our communication expert here she is also streaming all the information here um so uh, in fact with, with a good job done internally we have not stopped uh, outsourcing any designing work but this also means they are getting a lot of work overnight from ministry Uh, to prepare booklets and designs yeah yeah thank you so much uh, all of you uh, we will have these recorded uh, options here uh, and we are also uploading all the documents on all these best practices booklets and also the proceedings will be linked to the knowledge management hub of uh, gsz uh, we will get you access for all that we are also trying to give a permanent solution to hosting all these products somewhere uh, that you can use the links in your organizations later on that this this knowledge stays Uh, somewhere for you to get access to that i hope i have not missed out uh, anyone in the process parant mr rubab rubab of course yes that <laughs> <laughs> sorry for that rubab uh, in fact you know when rubab told that he has to leave to another organization it was like yeah we are missing the whole energy from the group yeah. but uh, yeah so but he, i think it's a part of life to uh, uh, get into progression and he readily volunteered today we were looking for someone to come and uh, bring the energy back to the room so he readily agreed and thank you rubab for being here and uh, we have to thank also rahul for all those fantastic uh, work you have been doing from sia consultancy and chandra bhushan chandra bhushan all of you know how much of uh, heart and soul he puts into his work and the quality he uh, looks for um, yeah thank you all and uh, so we hope we we are still looking for a uh, cleaner project we are continuing for next 3 years and we have quite a good team of people at the ministry and at cpcb and in the states uh, last week when we traveled to oribel i mean uh, we are very happy to see such a beautiful team working on clean air all of them very positive uh, and um, very energetic into commitment we could clearly see the commitments and i hope uh, that clean air thing go very well and pat best available techniques textiles document will continue for two and a half years more and uh, relocation project hyderabad is continuing for three years now um and we are hoping to get a follow on project for you js uh, mr nilesha i internet cooperation division was requesting if this can continue so we have uh, put up in our short list and in march uh, early march we will have discussions with the german ministry on this topic uh to see uh, because i think this environmental agencies play a good role uh, across the sectors be it mobility be it urban development be it uh or waste water management or clean air or all those topics are interrelated so we as we have placed it from our side and we look forward if that comes we stay with you otherwise also we stay with you and uh, yeah please do contact us uh, for any for the information and we uh, we will support you as much as we can Thank you all for this, and thank you for the time you gave us. Your photo we can do now. <laughs> thank you, sir, for guiding us through. And this has been a wonderful opportunity to work with the CIP and to be able to be part of such a. Uh, innovative process i can say with such so many people in so many ways 
been very thankful for the opportunity. And thank you everyone for being here and uh, contributing to this conference. It's been a success, I know. I think you all have a lot of good takeaways with you and nice memories. And if we could all gather here for a group photograph, and then we could have a look at the nice pin-up boards that we have as a gallery walk, and the SEIB team will be here to guide you through. Can you all have a group photograph, please? Thank you.